Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, 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 we're live apparently. So uh, welcome, welcome. Um, if you're new here, welcome to the pre-show that we're just sort of uh, ironing out any technical issues and bugs and things like that. Uh, let us know in the chat if you can hear me okay. Um, everything looks like it's working my end, so it says excellent and things, all words like that at my end. So yes, uh, we are going to be gearing it today, lots of gear. Um, unfortunately for those who have gas problems, <laughs> this is probably not going to be the best show if you've got gas problems. But um, what I will do is um, I'll try and make it so that I'm not repeating the stuff that was on the ProSynth network on Friday and, uh, and you know, we'll try and show stuff that, like, like I did last week, we'll try and show stuff that hasn't really been covered as much um, and see how we go with that. Uh, but yeah, um, good to see Darren back over here. Sorry that way. Darren's back. Oh, I've got. Darren, you're working, I've aren't you? screen covered then, I can't. Yeah, I got the screen covered with one of the uh, files, is that man? I couldn't see what was going on. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, lots of people waiting in the chat. Um, so, so my understanding is Superbooth is actually still running today. It's the last day of Superbooth, I believe, according to their website. It said it finishes on the Saturday. Uh, so I'm guessing the Saturday traditionally is the party day where everyone sort of um, finishes, packs up, and things like that, and parties. Um, it would be sort of in the afternoon over in Berlin right now. So um, let us know if you're actually watching from Berlin, if you're watching the show from Berlin. I'd love to know uh, if we actually reach there. A big hello to anyone who's in Germany. Not because German people are, are more special, it's just because Superbooth's there. Um, I have noticed that we are reaching the, the east coast of the US because we've got Chris Cynthia in the chat, which is good to see. So we're getting all the way over to there. It's very early in the morning over there. I do feel sorry for him. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we're reaching all parts of the globe, which is which is really, really cool. Um, let us know what part of the world you're from, um, just as out of interest. Um, I did see this guy on YouTube a couple of months ago. He had some sort of way where if you typed in your country or your city, it, he had this sort of Google map thing and it would put a pin where it, it like scanned the, the chat. It was pretty cool. I'd love to sort of get some, those little plugins. That'd be pretty cool. Um, we might a little bit later try out the Discord uh, Patreon chat to see if that works. I've got it set up. I don't know if uh, if it's going to work or not, but um, if it does, we will give that a whirl and see if we can get that working. And for those who are on Patreon, we'll know how to get into that. Um, mm. And that way we can actually do audio, uh, like audio callers in. Um, I think it's something that, that we should try out anyway, get some people to come in that don't want to be on camera, that yeah. would rather just have their voice. Um, we could do that, um, make a comment mm -hmm. here and there. So we can try that out. What else? Um, other than that, we're doing the pre-show, so we're just ironing out bugs. Um, do a mic test quickly, just in case. Uh, we'll start with you, Darren. Uh, one, two, one, two, check, check, check. Perfect. That's so clear too. Look, let's Three, have four, a look. Five, five. Let's have a look at your camera too. That is beautiful clear today. I like that. Nice. It's like yeah, you're just in, the next, it, just in the next room. All right. And what about uh, nice mic there? <coughs> yeah, that's a nice mic, Sorry. isn't it? And it's we'll just do... an SE. <laughs> I just want to get you well, on camera. Sorry, why I why I die a thousand. Yeah. Die a thousand deaths. <laughs> And your your camera's looking nice and clear too, Eddie. It's good. Uh, that, yeah, well, obviously, there's um, the the students are all back today. You should see down at the end of this road where the student there's a, some student flats at the end, and the, there's cars everywhere. It's absolutely mayhem. So by three o'clock this afternoon, they'll all have switched their laptops and their iPads and iPhones and logged, and everything will go slow. But ah. um, right now, yeah, it's looking all right. So we're good for about an hour. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> oh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what does mine, my ugly mug look like? Yeah, that looks clear, good, we're all good, beautiful. That's all working. People in the chat are happy. Um, did anyone say in the yeah. chat that they were from Berlin? I didn't I didn't actually watch. Let me just quickly. Uh, not yet. I don't think anybody said Berlin. Uh, we've got Sensium from was, uh, Belgium. It's not far. Sensium said he was in Belgium. No, I thought he was in Finland, I'm sure. Sensium, were you in Finland not that long ago? I'm sure you... You said you were, but maybe I'm 
getting it wrong. Um, uh, Keith, video <laughs> looks sharp. <laughs> Thanks, I, Sus. <laughs> everyone needs to guess where Keith is. Um, just yeah, you know, there's no hints with his username or anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, he could be any, he could be anywhere, couldn't he? Because he in, his, be. in his big pantech, in his great big pantechnican, he could be any, anywhere in Europe. Or... He could. Where are yeah. you today, Keith? He could, wouldn't he? Some yeah. somewhere near Riga. Finland for the, Finland for the summers, says so Senna. All right, okay. Wow. Yeah. Finland's nice choice. in the yeah, summer. Very nice. nice in the summer. I'd love to go to Fin I'd love to go to Finland. I've never been and I really would love to go. Ah yeah. yeah. Been to Helsinki, it's a nice place. Is there anywhere you haven't been, Darren, that I want to go to? You like you you obviously like North uh, as well. Um Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a North, Iceland North and, uh, person. Iceland, Helsinki, <laughs> Finland. Yeah. Um yeah. I haven't been to that many places, so I'm not a traveller. Uh, it's just those places I like. Is it, I actually but, spend a lot of time. But is it sinking, Helsinki? Is it, is it like a hell when it's sinking? Ha, ha, ba -da -dum, ba -dum. We always wondered. <laughs> well, oh, you need a hello to all the Finnish like, viewers. Hey, <sighs> Inky's right. Got a Inky. massive underground there, uh, thing in, hell, uh, in Finland. A massive underground? Uh, uh, well, no, it's like a, I don't know what it, it was made in the Cold War, I think. Um, in oh, case the, you all have to live under there, yeah, the, the, the tunnels, the big, yeah, yeah, the, like almost shopping center sizes. And yeah, the, didn't the Germans make that? And all sorts. I thought the Germans I, I made don't that. Know the actual, or did, or did they make that? On it. Hang on a sec, no, they made it to get away from the Germans, didn't they? Because they were worried about Germany taking over or, or or something i can't remember anyway i, I remember watching a, a documentary on it years ago there was something to do with the yeah, russians i did after i'd been there and i never got a chance to look at it <laughs> so it's interesting history anyway something to do with the russians helping them or the russians had something to do with it as well but yeah um anyone in finland let us know what it there's a website called hell looks showing the helsinki fashion snaps of random <laughs> That's you can look pretty hellish at times. Uh, interesting. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure each city has its own, its own sort of character. Wherever you live, it has specific character. Uh, Suzanne's jumped in. Good to see Suzanne. Yep. Beautiful. Um, talking a little bit before on Facebook. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Okay, so. I mean, we do you guys want to? Should we start early? Because we've got a lot to get through. Um, there's really nothing for me more to do now that we've ironed out all the bugs. We, we're happy. We've been streaming for about eight minutes. Everything yeah. seems to be fine. Will that upset anyone if I start early? No. The people who want you to start early, yes. They'll yeah. Be I think everyone, everyone who's in the chat can just have a. They can, they can, we can all start early, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Everyone. You've. You've got a special request, Darren. Yeah, Suzanne's ah. after Suzanne's after Rave Dave. Oh, you got to drop that. Tell us to come on. Tell us to come on next week because uh, I'm going to try and do something for next week. So, okay, I, I might bring in Rave Dave as right. a guest. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, everyone's saying go for it. I'm going to do it. Okay, let's hit this button. So this is what we're doing. Ooh. Yeah, galore. Uh, hopefully you've arrived here on a Saturday. We're a little bit early today, but that's cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, maybe your credit card might be a little bit scared to watch this show today because we are going to be going through a lot <laughs> of stuff, a lot of gear. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. I've got a massive big list of stuff to get through. Um, I've been trying to sort of watch videos and read up on stuff, so I'll do my best to tell you as much as we can about the things that we're talking about. But just remember, um, we aren't sponsored, we're not in the industry, we're just users of products just like you guys, and hopefully it's that perspective that really is what you're after anyway. So without further ado, we'll say a big hello to, we'll go with Darren, because he hasn't been on for a couple of weeks. Big hello to you, Darren, how's your week been? Uh, week's been um, fine, nothing special. Uh, well, I'll say that, but we have these, let me see. Wow. Oh, can you see that there? Yeah. Uh -huh. I like this. So we have, I will just go through them. We have, let me see that. Nice. 
Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that should be out for Christmas. Um, then we also have. Can you see that? Yep. Uh, I'll give you the. Uh, if anyone can see that there. Life yeah. forms within it's life it. forms. Yep. Oh. In music we yeah. mm -hmm. we live. Farewell to all endlessly. Beautiful. All right. That's an EP. That'll be out in October. Um, seven days. Seven days. Beautiful. That's nice. coming out next year. And echoes. Yeah. Beautiful. When's so that coming out? Someone's been very busy. Uh, Wonderful. These two are looking like next year. Oops. These two are looking like next year. Yeah. For now. Um, Life EP will be out October. I'm not exactly sure when in October, but it'll be in October. And the big album is hopefully coming out in December. Beautiful. Oh, well, that well, is where will very we get them exciting. from, Darren? That will all be confirmed, and uh, I'll tell you that on Ramsey's show at some point soon. So there you go. Right. Watch the space. And you won't have to pay for them, so don't worry about it. Watch this space. Oh, that's exciting. Hey, hey, no, don't say things. Yeah, well, thank you. But don't say things like that. We're happy to People pay for will, good music. People <laughs> will throw you cash at you. Don't yeah. worry about that, Darren. All right. No, I don't think that. You might throw the seat. You might throw it back at me. <laughs> I'm sure we won't. We like your music. <laughs> okay. Let's go across we to do. Andy. Big hello to you, Andy. Hello, everyone. How's your week been? Just work. I mean, really, just work. Uh, back in now properly. Um, everything up to speed. My new role at Home Tutor is really overwhelming, but great. Loving that. Um, but I just find myself getting home knackered every night, but enjoying myself. Actually, really, really enjoying being back at work. Uh, I've done absolutely nothing in it. As you can see, everything is still dismantled and propped up in the hallway, and I've not yet got round to reassembling. But that's uh, that's getting closer uh, as I, as I'm, as my plans sort of come together in my head as to how I want things to be in this room because I, I want to have a change around of where things have been but like um, like I said to you sort of in, before we went live that uh, the, the process of doing that, that gig a few weeks ago and getting ready for it made me made me want to sort of rationalize things a lot more uh, just just strip quite a lot a lot of things out I don't think there'll be things uh, everything will be coming back in uh, I think I'm, I'm going to have a real good think about what I want to use how I want to use it and where it's going to to go, um, mm. so that that's that's my plan now. Nothing like a plan. Nothing like a plan with a, yeah. a bit of toast and jam to go with it. Fantastic. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually uh, interesting because uh, Kent's just commented. Uh, Kent Spong's just commented in the chat. I mean, he 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 dismant he's dismantled his studio at home as well, and even his computer. Then forgot he was doing pro internet work last night. <laughs> so set it up quickly. <laughs> so yeah, he says he knows how I feel. But actually, there's, there's there's something very very refreshing about it. I mean, Darren, you've done it recently as well. The complete rethink and rationalising of your working space. Sometimes you just need to, and it, it's it's quite mm. it, quite refreshing. I mean, you must have taken ages to plan out how all that's gone in. I, I don't think I'll be able to go to that sort of extent, but there's something very cathartic no, you, about you, it. You will, because you've emptied everything now, and it's so much better when everything's emptied. You don't have to mess mm. about with wires. You can sort of start gradually coming back in. It was great to put it back in, um, but the only problem is you start, what, rush get it back in, because you've got all this, oh, I've got to get this, <laughs> I want to get it in. <laughs> but, yeah, it's much better when it's empty. Yeah, it, I, I, it's definitely a good thing to do. I did it when we recarpeted here. Um, geez, that was a while ago. I think it was the start of this year as well. Um, and I kind of I put things back differently. Um, I had a similar layout, mm. so it wasn't like a real rethink for me. It was kind of I'll just have a similar layout. But what what ended up happening with me is I definitely ad addressed the fact that I need to build two uh, or one big new modular case, which is a project that I'm now uh, well and truly underway in. But, yeah. Um, you know, you might find that too, Andy. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see how we yeah. go. Um, let's say about the chatties. On that case, by the way, runs. Well, it's underway. Um, the wood is uh, en route. I'm, uh, there's a this weird thing happening. I don't know if it's your part of the world, but in Australia, it's hard to get wood at the moment, which is weird. Oh, it's not no, like I don't know about I, that. I, I went for a drive the other day. There's plenty of trees around. <laughs> it's not like all the trees have <laughs> fallen over and disappeared. But yeah, it's yeah. it's hard to get wood. I don't know why. Um, anyway, it's on it's on its way. That's that's the that's that side of it, and we'll see what happens 
shortly after that arrives, maybe some videos might pop out. Oh, um, so microchips and road haulage here, that seems to be the, the issues. Well, microchips are, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let's say a lot of the chatties because uh, they're important as well. Well, um, I think they are anyway. I mean, I know what you were saying about them before, Andy, but yeah. No, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I can't remember who was first. <laughs> um, I can't remember who was first. Anyway, we'll say big hello to um, a couple of Patreons are in here, which is really nice to see. Uh, JX3D. Uh, we got um, uh, Azio Head, Martin Taylor, and I mentioned before Chris Cynthia's in there. Big hello to you. Um, staying up early. That's always good. Wagoo's there. Big hello to Wagoo. Future World Machines. JP Page 2, did I say that? I don't know if I said that. Um, because weeks, mm -hmm. weeks go into weeks, go into weeks. You kind of forget who you're talking to. Sasquatch. Um, who else? Kent's there. Big hello to Kent. Uh, corrosive Abuser. Mm. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got all, all the PSN guys here except Ben. Go and fetch him. Yeah, go get Ben. <laughs> Slap him around the back of the head a bit. Um, <clears throat> it's nice to have them. Dr. Synth, Manny's there. Um, mm -hmm. Where else? Ken. Ken Lewis, good to see Ken. Uh, Sensian, I mentioned, I think. Um, yeah, so scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. If I haven't mentioned your name, you know what to do. You need to throw your synth at the screen because that's, you know, just not on. I'm going to go all the way to the end and see who just jumped in at the last second. I think Robbie, Robbie's been on for a little bit, so there's a big hello to Robbie, failed muso. But yeah, at OZ, a few of the regulars. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, let's get... Let's get straight into it because we've got to get through a big show. Um, you guys know we're going to get through it. But always first, we always start off with humour. This is just to lighten our, our day a little bit, starting with this. Yes, it's the funny side where stranger things do happen. Um, you may actually laugh. Uh, I've been doing this now for almost three years, and uh, let me know if that actually does ever happen. But anyway, we'll start with this one. Um, you never know, it could just be a miracle that you actually might laugh at this. How modular dudes see themselves? I am the architect, I created the matrix. Yeah, interesting, bit of dope for stuff there. Who is, who is that? Is that, is that the guy in the matrix? The guy that actually is the architect in the matrix? I, I believe it is, in the movie. I've no, I've, in the, I think he's sorry, in the it's third. Been such a long time. Yes, yeah, it is. I think in he's the in the third, third one, yeah. Oh, right. When he tells oh. Neil that he's not, the, he's not the first. Yeah, he's not the first. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, there's a new right, Matrix, okay. isn't there? There's a new Matrix, I believe. Is it finished yet? I don't know. Yes, there certainly is coming out. It's coming Beautiful. out this Christmas. Beautiful. Um, anyway, we've got this interesting looking thing. Um, <laughs> so wow. um, the caption on Facebook where I found this, it said... Um, how others see my Eurorack collection. <laughs> this is an IBM computer, obviously, from the 1960s, I think. It might have been 1960s. This is a IBM 360. Anyone in the chat know about the IBM 360? Um, look at the wiring on that. Isn't it a thing of beauty? Well, hey, Someone did that and... Uh, well, just, had, just the had, case for you, right, like that would be great. Yeah, it's like a trolley. It's look. They they might have even it called this cool. portable in that day. It might have been a portable <laughs> computer. <laughs> look at the wheels on it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um. Yes. <laughs> right. Um. Some interesting ones. Oh, this what one. was the machine called that Alan Turing built? What was that machine called? The Enigma the was up the garage, but what was his machine? What was his machine called uh, that uh, he built? I've forgotten his name. Yeah, I something that. like Brenda or something like that. I watched the movie just the other day too. It was really good. That movie, um, the recent what, one. Which one? The, the one. The one with um, uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, and um, is it Keira Knightley or I can't remember. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, what was it? The 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 something game, the differentiation game. The that's it. The Turing machine? Uh, something like that. Is it the Turing machine? No, well, it, it wasn't called the Turing it machine. Is, but was it had a name. He named it. I think that's uh, what I, we've always uh, called it. Anyway, anyway, come see my laptop uh, live. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that like software since here. So this is how they envisage that 
their life when they play live. Um, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> and this one's Ascension, for... the bomb. This, one's, this one is for, for all YouTubers, all fellow YouTubers here. You guys can get yourselves... This is uh, actually... Um, I don't know if Pete's around. Um, big shout out to Pete. He was the one that posted this. Uh, Studio Lab, be a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> 25 pounds. <laughs> ah, dearie me. Look at it, look at it, look at it, eh? You could um, have the subscribe logo and the thumbs up and, um, yeah. <laughs> my, my son and I joke about you. There's a, there's, a, a, there's a way a lot of YouTubers talk uh, and, you know, we, we do this kind of like joke in the car, like subscribe, click like, click like, click like, and just kind of just go crazy and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that is it for Funny Side. So uh, what was your favourite gentleman? And I, chatting, I like and, and the ladies. computer yeah. just because it was amazing. Yeah? Yeah, and I don't know if it's funny, but it was just cool. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be funny, but it was just uh, what people think Eurorack looks like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I want yeah, it to I look. think it looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Cool. Um, yeah, don't forget to tingle my bell. That's a weird one, that one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if I would ever be saying that. Um, you probably don't even notice me ever I've saying that, been, actually. I've been gone a bit, and already you're bringing the show down. <laughs> it wasn't me that said it, it was Wagoo. Come on, give us a break. Um, hey, there were some, there were some great samples from last week. Oh, yeah, there would have been. I tell you what, last week was really, really hard. Um, I mean, for there's a, a, a number of reasons why it was hard, but um, the first, the first and foremost reason is because it's I can't, I can't play guitar for absolute. You know, you could throw peanuts at me, and I'd probably be happy. Um, that was the first thing. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is that it's pretty risky doing guitar on a synth channel. That's the second thing, which makes it really, really hard. Um, but we did keep it synth related. And uh, and a poor Eddie, he was pulling his hair out trying to get his set up. He had he had all of his cameras set up, and he had OBS working beautifully. And just it, on the day, it just it just didn't want to work. He just couldn't get it to work properly. But um, I think it I think it came out okay in the end. It was a it was an interesting oh, it was show. Quite, it was quite good fun. I mean, I just sat there through a lot of it going, I really don't know what on earth this is <laughs> all about. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what a lot of people do when I show you that. absolutely zero. When I show you a rack on this show, that's what a lot of people do because <laughs> they just yeah. keyboard players are like, "What's this? <laughs> what is this electronic thing that you're showing me? This rubbish." Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat. I do that in the studio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, ENIAC. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, KFC is um, mentioned that the the first guy looked like the KFC uh, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders, yeah, that's his okay. name. Where, where's that first guy? Here he is. Bang. Did you, he looks like yeah, he looks a bit like Colonel Sanders, doesn't he? Have you ever noticed? Uh, <laughs> I, I have to show you something. This is this is extremely funny. You'll never ever look at the oh. KFC logo ever again the same way. I don't know if you've ever ever noticed this, but uh, let me just get a copy of this image. Uh, and uh, don't say anything if you know what I'm about to say, Darren. Um, let me just quickly get this. And I'll put it in. This is this uh, this show is going to be brought to you by KFC in a second. Um, where how do I get rid of that? There we go. Okay, so check out the KFC. Uh, check out Colonel there. And what's with his arms and legs looking so small underneath his head there? <laughs> I'd never noticed. I had never noticed that before. Now I'm never going to not see you it. Will you will never ever <laughs> ever look at that logo the same again. Uh, look at that. Beautiful. Um, he's doing the river dance. He's, yeah, he is. <laughs> he's uh, down on the bayou <laughs> with some southern <laughs> southern fried chicken. Beautiful. Right. Okay. What can we do next? Um, we can do news because that's probably what this show is going to be all about. Let's do it. Boom. Lots of news, which we've all heard. We've all heard the news. Everyone's heard the news. Um, but let's, uh, why don't we start with this one? This is interesting. I love things like this, right? There's, okay, yes, there's going to be some Eurorack in the show. Um, get over yourselves. Because um, I love Eurorack, so bad luck. Um, 
the looper, the loop man, sorry, the loop man, let's get it right, not the looper man, the loop man by Error Instruments. I think we showed this a little while ago, but now it's actually a Eurorack module as opposed to like a little sort of standalone electronic project. Um, yeah, so basically it's an experimental tape recorder. Uh, it is what you can see. Um, and what you can do is record and play tapes in your Eurorack. Um, plus it also has a built-in FM radio. Uh, FM and AM, I should say, which is actually handy because you can always use static noise and mm, half-tuned nice in you know, stations and things mm. like that. Always good fun to do with. It has a Lopez gate. Um, now that that was interesting. It, uh, so that that was written on their on their website. I've never heard the, that term before. Lopez, L O P E Z. Does anyone is that a typo on their website? Do they do they mean low pass gate, or is Lopez gate a type of thing that I've never heard? Perhaps of? it's just a Spanish one. Yeah, interesting. Uh, maybe it's a wrought uh, cast iron gate. Uh, anyway, control um, of speed of tape with CV, and it's a 20 HP, uh, you know, in terms of um, width, 345 mm. euros, priced available now. That's including VAT. You can buy it in black, pink, or blue slash green. So it's three different colors. And instead of crapping on like I like to do, why don't we have a look, look. This isn't the Eurorack module, but it's exactly the same thing. Good morning, this is Paltas Error Instruments, and this is about the Loopman or the Lopeman. What's the name Lopeman? Lope means walk in. All right, let's keep I going. I can show it a little bit. Uh, this is the I hear nothing, but it's recording. Um, Here we go. That is so cool. <laughs> oh, that's fun. All right, let's pause that. It goes for 12 minutes, that video, so we're not gonna go all through it all, but I think you guys get the idea. It's playing, you're playing tape, you adjust the speed. There's a big, fat speed knob in the middle, which you can actually control via your, uh, via CV. Um, yeah. Anyone interested in that out of you two gentlemen? Yes, but the price. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Sasquatch, has, who was it? In uh, a future world machine, just said 345 euros for a Walkman. It feels a <laughs> bit like that, doesn't it? You it know, does. Um, yeah. Even if it does have a low-pass gate, it does seem like a lot, a lot of money for just basically a, a tape playback thing, cassette playback, but... I, I love the idea, and I love the idea of having, yeah, having a, uh, a an AM radio in it. Even better if it had a shortwave radio in, that would be even better still. But uh, I just, I've just asked Eduardo if, if he's if he's recovered, and he said recovered from what I meant recovered from the exertions of last weekend. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, that's all. <laughs> he recovered from like face palming. <laughs> I wasn't suggesting that you were ill. <laughs> Recovered from face palming. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, Darren. Did you want to have a, a quick comment before we jump over to the website? I, I'm pretty much where Andy is. It's like I, I, at first I thought nah, and then I, after a, a while looking, I thought, well, I don't know actually. I quite mm. like the idea of tapes, but it looks like on that picture of it with of the module. Surely it's not the, the tape buttons are not on the top, are they? Where it's, yeah, they are. Yeah, it looks like it's some sort of. Out. No, it's to the way. No, it's to the way round. Uh, look, uh, surely it's the other way around. They're, they're, they're on the side. No, it's on the top. It's on the top. No, uh, no, that's on. That's yeah. on top. That that's on top. Written that way. So yeah. how's that going to work? Is that just like a tape deck just stuck on oh. the front? Then basically, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. They've um, gone to a uh, lot of expense. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not as good as I thought. Then. No, I'll look at it. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the website. Um, which button is that? I forget. I'm just going to click it. Uh, quick look at the website. I don't want. I do want to show you where it did say Lopez. There it is, Lopez Gate. So I don't know what that means. Did anyone in the chat mention what that was? Uh, someone couldn't quickly have a quick look in chat. No. 
Um, I think it's a mistake that this is this is definitely like a, a Heinbach sort of module, isn't it? This one. Um, oh yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, um, the whole thing, the whole thing is really it's. What needs to be what probably this needs to be, I think, is comes in comes in pink. I think it needs to be this. If you want a pink one, but also have some sample logic in it as well. And I think if if they went just that one step further and put a bit of sample logic in this, um, where it's got a you know some sort of um, real real basic sort of sample, like um, like what you can do on the magneto, like a little a tiny little looper. Well, or a, quite. I was thinking, you know, what can this do that, say, you can't do on a morphogene other than that this is actually analog cassette tape, which mm. we all know is is not necessarily the most reliable format. It can go horribly wrong, especially when you're messing about speeding it up, slowing it down. So, uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, not, your tape uh, gets tangled sure. up in a bit. <laughs> it, is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, um, I think uh, it does say... Um, experimental somewhere on here where does it say that um yeah that whole that whole sentence uh is actually it's too much for under <laughs> yeah it's too much because <laughs> um max pointed out that whole sentence has got lopez gate which we don't know and it also says fairy experimental <laughs> that that's something that i'm also interested Whoa. in now <laughs> Thanks, Stephen, for pointing that out. <laughs> what is fairy experimental? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> just see the fairies while you're playing that. <laughs> oh, Do you geez. think that's been translated? That's so is that Google Translate from Dutch? It probably uh, is. It's just been, probably. It's just, yeah, it's just been mistimed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I quite like that's that. Quite, I quite like experimental. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some <laughs> fairy experimental music. That's a, that's a name for a track, isn't it? Actually? <laughs> fairy experimental. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's keep going. Um, um, why not? What else have we got? Uh, number two is uh, Chaos Devices. Uh, these guys make some mm -mm -mm. awesome modules. Now, I, um, yep. I'm i going to go out on the wing here and, and, and hope that, that Nick is going to give me permission to show a little bit of his video because I haven't actually asked him. Usually he does. Um, so we'll, we'll give a nod to, I'll put a link in his description and stuff and give a nod to Sonic State, he's, he's pretty awesome. Anyway, Chaos Devices, um, Zag, Zagrazeb, Zagrazeb, how do you say that? Um, then you've got Minsk Zagrazeb. and Erfurt. Uh, so you've got three modules. Minsk, and, Minsk and Erfurt. Erfurt, they're all cities. Okay, but what about Zag, Zagrazeb? Is that a city too? I think it's probably the original spelling. Zagreb. Zag yeah, but it's yeah, got a Z in it. Yeah. Minsk and, uh, and Erfurt. Erfurt's in, in, in Germany. It's in Saxony, I think, or Turingen. So these are all just cities. Cool. Anyway, let's let's talk yeah. about what they are. Zag Zagreb is a stereo multi-mode 4-pole, 24 dB per octave state variable filter. There are five frequency responses on this, where three of them can be controlled simultaneously, which is actually mm. a really cool thing. And you can spread yeah. the control of animation of the stereo image with left to right cutoff frequencies in opposite directions. That is bloody awesome. Um, I'll show you a video of um, of basically of what Sonic State have quickly shown at the super booth in the set, because there's not really a lot of information other than what I'm telling you and the video. Minsk is a, so we're gonna do the three modules all together because it's a bit hard to separate them. Minx is a 6HP hybrid stereo imaging processor. So this kind of goes along with that um, the filter, so you could use them together. It uses an advanced mid to slide or MS manipulation of the stereo pair of a signal. And then you can tweak the mid and side components of your track um, or your sound or whatever you want to call it with a knob and voltage control. And it's kind of, I, I kind of feel it's like a phase out of phase sort of style effect. You know, like they used to do on the old um, turntables. So I kind of feel mm. that's kind of what they're doing with this, obviously with electronics. Uh, and the last one's a third, is a binary phase accumulator that has an eight output clock and audio frequency divider. That is cool. An audio frequency divider is actually really cool. Plus it's got a bi-directional binary counter, or you can actually use it as a programmable digital oscillator, which is part of the Leibniz binary system, which is something that Chaos Devices 
are involved with. Let's, uh, I can't get the pronunciation, sorry, Andy. <laughs> Leibniz. <laughs> Leibniz, okay. <laughs> Typical linguist. <laughs> sorry. Airfoot. Go on, Rams. Get it right now. <laughs> I'm Aussie. <laughs> what do you want? Right, here we go. Let's have a quick look. And I'm going to skip through bits because I don't want to play this whole thing. So there's the um, Zagreb there. Its special features uh, are bandpass uh, outputs because uh, you have uh, uh, three different uh, sets of slope uh, for the bandpass. All right, I'm not going to do too much of that. And I think the earlier in the video we were showing the, where are we? Um, Minsk, where's the Minsk? Yep, so he's showing the Minsk earlier. Algorithms uh, to make the mono signal stereo on. Uh, then you can process this uh, in a mid-side uh, uh, domain, so uh, the mid signal and the side signal, you can just uh, insert here some effects. Uh, you I should, so before we, we go on, I should mention here, he, he, he's just got a mono signal going into this. Now, if you, if you guys are listening, it should be in stereo, you can hear the mono signal actually being separated out of phase right now, and he's just going to do some adjustments, but you'll hear it. It's really, really cool. You can change the white of the signal uh, with this knob. You can have just mono mid signal or, or the side signal, and uh, here it's... Anyway, so so that is real a real quick look um, at uh, the other ones is just a, a clock divider and, and mucking, mucking around. So uh, Chaos devices are producing some really really cool stuff. I've got um, I think one or two of their modules already. Um, the Bat Batumi, which is my favourite LFO modules, probably my favourite so far of theirs. Uh, start with you, Darren. Any of those pick your interest? I know what you told me at the start of the show, but maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I've actually got one or two chaos devices myself. I've got the one that was, I can't remember what it's called now, but it was next to the Batumi in the video. Um, yeah, interesting. I, it's hard for me to say about modular because I've uh, not touched my modular for ages. It has uh, become uh, a sitting duck at the moment because, uh, yeah, I get too hooked up on it otherwise and I don't end up doing anything. So at the moment, modular is not in my, uh, to look for, but, but yeah, they look cool. And uh, the thing is with modular, everything that comes out, you just want anyway. <laughs> it is. Uh, what if I told you that the uh, prices? Uh, so we've got we've got face, facial reaction from Darren here. What the free? Um, the Zagreb is two hundred and sixty euros. The Minsk is one hundred and ninety euros, and the Erfurt, <laughs> this is just for Andy, is <laughs> one hundred and fifty euros. <laughs> Available soon. Uh, let's let's go to Andy. See if, see if we can get some disgusted look on his face for not pronouncing German properly. No, I'm saying I say nothing. I say nothing. Um, yeah, like Darren, like Darren just said, actually every bit of euro right that comes out, I go, oh, well, that's interesting. What that does, how, how could I put that in my rack? What, what effect would it be? Is it going to enhance? Is it going to get in the way? And each one of those, I'm thinking, yeah, I quite like the look of those. Quite like the sound of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I've, I've made a list of things that I am going to acquire eventually when I've saved up the pennies first, and I'm not buying anything until I have done that. Mm. And it will almost certainly mean buying a second case. Oh, dear. Oh, heck. So, not buying those, not yet. Okay. I just had a message uh, while I got you guys there from Ken. Let's see if we can get him in the show. He wants to join in. It was prearranged. He's uh, beautiful. Right, okay. Wake um, up, Ken. You can come in when you're, when you're ready, Ken. You've got all the, de all the details. Let's see what he says. Give him three minutes. He's setting up now. Okay. So we'll get Ken in because uh, we did actually want him on the show earlier. Now, when he's in, hopefully uh, I'll catch him. But before he, we go to him, why don't we go to the next thing? And hopefully what I'm showing you guys is stuff that you haven't seen, um, you know, other than maybe looking at Sonic State and a few of those channels, but stuff that you haven't seen yet. So let's go to this one. Uh, and hopefully what I'm showing you guys... Ooh. That would be Ken. All right, just a sec. We're just going to mute uh, Ken just for a sec. Here we go. Beautiful. Here we go. 
Numa X Piano, a game changer for digital piano players. This is Numa X Piano, high-end features, sounds and effects, designed and organized in an amazing, intuitive and effective way to offer the best feeling in performance, under every aspect and in every context. With an incredibly powerful brand new sound engine, four parts easily assignable to internal sounds or to external MIDI, four tracks built-in digital mixer, USB audio interface, and the best touch ever. That's why Numa X Piano is the ultimate keyboard for the ultimate digital piano player. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, okay, so let's go to the graphic that I've got here. There it is. Um, so there's two versions of it, uh, 88 and 73 key. Um, okay, so what's cool about this? It's um, it's a brand new engine that um, they've developed. Um, I don't know if it's with with themselves or if they've used Waldorf or, or what here. They usually use Waldorf Studio Logic do, but anyway, we'll see what happens. I haven't actually found any more than that out. Uh, electric piano with... Um, four parts, it can be controlled um, via external MIDI so you can use them as actual sound um, banks as well so you don't have to just use the keyboard themselves. It has a four track built in digital mixer with a USB audio interface and it has a sound font that uses acoustic and electric modeling technology to produce over 200 different type real sounds. These are type of, this is the sort of thing that you want a real analog sort of modeling, acoustic modeling sound. So you've got pianos, keyboards, guitars, organs, and even synths. It is a, does have a VA type, um, you know, the Studio Logic type VA synth in there. Um, yeah, don't know the price. Don't know anything really more than what I've shown you. And obviously there's some information on their website about the tech details and that. But we do have Ken here who's just rocked up. And I thought, let's, let's get Hi, his Ken. audio working. Is your audio working, Ken? No, not yet. No audio yet, buddy. We can't get your audio. And it's not it's not our end, it's your end. You. There we go. Sorry, I had to unmute that channel. Um, yeah, when I joined in earlier, I had the YouTube thing playing, so sorry for the feedback. Hey, I'm, there we go. <laughs> I literally just woke up like a couple minutes ago. <laughs> um, it was a late night, so that's that's my fault. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Oh, you got the Knobcon shirt on. Good, good man, good man. Yeah. Uh, this, this is actually from the. I don't even remember if I went to this one. Uh, it's too early in the morning. A few years ago, was it? It's not. <laughs> though. I, sh I, sh I should say it's nine thirty in the morning. I should have been up a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> I like the I like the haircut that you're sporting there. I haven't seen you with uh, hair that long for a while. <laughs> You've been yeah, avoiding yeah, avoiding the barber. Out. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I've got the, the big boy in front of me, so I'm kind of backed up a little bit. Yeah, so you've got that's in, why it's a mess. In, so in front of you, what you're talking about is you've got the uh, the new Hydra synth. Uh, is that the yeah. se the 73 key version? Yeah, yeah, the deluxe. Yeah. Um, Beautiful 73, and I have a. I have an explorer around here somewhere. I think it's on my kitchen kitchen counter. Actually, I'll grab it later when we're talking about it. But that, yeah, so so coming back from Nobcon, getting resituated, the studio is a mess. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you. Um, now, the the explorer is the one that I'm I'm really really keen on getting myself because uh, I love the whole battery power portability. But I mean, how cool is it that it's going to have? Uh, it, well, it has. What am I saying? It's going to have. It has uh, poly aftertouch on a little mini key, you know, synth. It's so cool. So, yeah. and it, it's semi. The, the crazy thing is, is that it's semi weighted. Semi weighted. Um, yeah. Which, so, so technically, they're mid sized keys. They're not mini keys because, like the, what is it? The uh, key step micro brute. Yeah, that, those are mini keys. Those are like really small. These are like somewhere in between that. Right. And but but the thing is, is that they're semi weighted. Not just the polyphonic aftertouch, but the fact that they're semi weighted. That was like a whole process, engineering wise, to, mm. to get them to be semi weighted and have it actually work in a key bed that size. Because I don't think any other keys that are that size are actually semi weighted. The um, 
even like the um what is it the uh like the mini log and stuff like that they're all synth weighted they're all really light um these are all you know they have like a, a nice balance to them yeah yeah um i do i, I kind of want to come back to the the um hydro synth in a little in a little bit because i just want to um i just yeah. want to finish off talking yeah. about just finish talking off about the um the numa x piano because i think it's a it's a cool thing um it's always nice to see something new come out that um, isn't in the mainstream of news. So this is the website, Studio Logic. Yeah. Um, it's really it's really built for for players basically. Um, they do did, say did the you... keyboard on this is actually really nice as well. I didn't actually t mention that. Sorry, Andy, go for it. I was going to say, did you have a price on this or not? I I couldn't <laughs> find a price. So someone in chat may keep an right. eye on chat. See if someone in chat may know. You know, I couldn't really find one. I suspect yeah. it's going to be quite expensive. I mean, the, the Studio Logic SL88 Grand is a, a, is a, a lovely, lovely ma master keyboard, you know, piano field keyboard. It really is gorgeous. So if they've attached that to a new synth engine, um, I suspect the thing is going to be well over a thousand pounds because the the SL88 Grand is is a good seven hundred mm. quid at least. So, but I think it, I think it's a, a gorgeous looking thing. I do hope, though, it, within it, you've, you've got a nice uh, CP80 sound in there because that's really what I'm after in the, in the electric, electronic pianos. But, yeah, look at that. It, just looks, it looks the business, doesn't it? It really does look lovely. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Um, Did it see where that engine comes from, like where it's taken from? That's what I was saying before. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's from Waldorf or if it's something that they've developed themselves. Um, so I'll just... Well, yeah, yeah interesting because... It, Probably a Waldorf thing, but the thing that makes me wonder is what Waldorf uh, units they have that have that sort of engine. The only one that I'm really thinking of my head, and I'm just waking up, is that what's that um, that really really nice one that they have that has the built-in speakers to it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, now no, you've got me too. I haven't. I can't remember the name of it. If it's either. got that engine. Yeah. That would be crazy. Yeah. Look, I don't know. Someone the, might. The might studio. Tell us. The Studio Logic Sledge was virtual analog. Yeah, that, so it maybe does, the, one of the one of the engines is is based on that, which does, again was I think a Baldorf. Yeah, it does have because uh, they've licensed that in the Studio Logic stuff, so it does actually have part of the Sledge engine in it already. They've actually talked about mm -hmm. that in here because it does synth sounds. Right. Um, yeah, there was there was something talking about some sort of uh, editor or manager, which they're saying coming soon. So obviously you can. Uh, edit and manage sounds yeah. in there. Um, this is the bit about the keyboard. So, uh, so they they actually talking about new hammers, extremely um, like authentic feel with um, bounce reduction. Um, they're calling it the TP one ten, um, which is I don't know what the TP one hundred. People who know keyboards will know this more than me, but it has aftertouch which is triggered by the hammers for a more accurate control. I like that. Um, they, they are really talking, so someone needs to get their hands on one of these and try it out because they, they are really talking about the touch of this. It's a real player's thing. There's the connections on the bat. So you've got lots of pedals. Remembering too, it's got a four channel mixer in this as well. So the whole point of that mixer is that you can actually split your keyboard up and mix different instruments uh, on, the, on the fly, which is really good. Uh, and it does have audio in. Hmm. Um, there's the digital mixer there. So you can bring your mic in and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's a real a real sort of, um, you know, players thing. That's what they're sort of, that's what they're aiming for. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you the guys that. I haven't seen a lot of uh, people talk about this. So, uh, which is weird because, you know, it's, it's come out at Superbooth. It's weird. Like... I mean, I, I know obviously there's other stuff that people have talked about, but I, I just thought this was really, really quite nice. Um, I like to see stuff that's made in a quality way, um, especially performing things, because a lot of things are made on the cheap and everyone goes, oh, the price, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, when, when you're actually performing live, um, you know, it's really nice to have something really, really sturdy and well made because you want it to last. Um, who wants to make a quick comment this before we move on? Um, I don't really know anything. Very more. nice, uh, very nice, well made. 
but it won't it'll be for proper players no, no one like me you know people <laughs> but it, yeah it looks really nice you've got to be a player for that i think so someone said 1300 euros that would be extremely yeah, cheap <clears throat> that would be very well, cheap I'm and it says two two thousand dollars US dollars for the Numa X piano GT. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see if it's got if it's if it derives the engine from that Waldorf Zarenborg thing mm. uh, for the piano stuff. That would be really uh, yeah worth worth checking out because mm. um, I think a lot of people would probably want that thing, but maybe the the shape of it doesn't appeal to them so this would is a lot more traditional shape yeah but this looks really cool it does it does um well it's probably a better time than any maybe we should talk about hydrosynth um i reckon it's a perfect opportunity to talk about hydrosynth because um yeah you want to say something no i was just gonna say my wife's probably going to come in here with coffee because she just got back from starbucks be aware <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> that's all right all right. Uh, Bring me a coffee too. Yeah, tell, tell Jen to get me one. Um, okay, so um, you've been talking about this like literally for the last few, few weeks. So do, hang on, let me just take it off the screen. For, Here's for our coffees. Take it off the screen for a sec. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Yeah, she, she was hiding behind the All right. Ken, you've been, you've been at KnobCon. Um, I've been following your, your posts and your chat on um Obviously, it was a really, really cool event. So, tell us first of all, tell us a little bit about KnobCon, um, and then we'll go into Hydrosynth after that. So, I'll just, um, I guess, I guess the first thing I would say is that this year was not like any other KnobCon that I've been to for a lot of reasons. Um, it was so. I, I guess I'll, I'll get the, the elephant in the room out first as far as COVID. Um, so, it was actually. A, a pretty big discussion in my household about going there because uh, I do have an autistic son who has um, uh, a weakened immune system. So it was kind of a little bit of whether or not I should do it and how safe to be and all that kind of stuff. I'll say that the most unsafe part of it, in my opinion, was the airport and flying, um, which wasn't horrible. Um, the flight out there was great because I had the whole row. Um, the flight back was a little bit more cramped. But KnobCon itself was actually really, um, really well done as far as spacing people out. Uh, it was not overcrowded at all. Um, and then that's also kind of the, you know, the good and the, and the bad on that was that um, the it was way, way lower, um, both by uh, dealers and by, um, you know, manufacturers and customers uh so it didn't feel like previous years for a lot of reasons but at the same time it um in a way it was kind of like the early years of knobcon where it's you know it's always had this kind of family atmosphere where it's very much like small community and um just just a very very tight-knit community there was not a lot of manufacturers there this year and that was felt because when you walk into the room and it's like, you know, there was only a few of us in there, it was, it was kind of surprising. Saturday was pretty good. Sunday was pretty dead. Um, I think maybe, maybe 30 to 40 people through the booth on Sunday. Like it was very slow. Um, but on the other side of that, it was kind of fun because that meant that, you know, I could walk over and talk to, you know, Ricky Tinez a bit. And, um, you know, I've, I've got a bunch of friends that were there, Aaron from 1010 Music. And, you know, so we actually got some more time to kind of hang out and, and talk to each other. Um, but, yeah, it, so so on the COVID side of things, it definitely changed the dynamic of it. And there was a lot less, you know, a lot less YouTubers. And because of that, you're seeing a lot less content. So, yeah. Mm. Um, you know, in a way, I guess that's kind of cool for you because I get to come on here and show you this thing, and you know, not not a lot of people have seen it. So that, yeah, that. it is. I mean, obviously, it's impossible for me because I can't I can't even leave my state, yet alone my country, at the moment. So I, I mean, I can't go to any of these events. I'm completely I'm a prisoner in my own in my own country. Um, so the best we can do is just to communicate over, you know, video chat. 
Zoom or YouTube or whatever. So this is, you know, this is our life at the moment until we can solve this this human malware, right? Um, so yeah, let's. <laughs> Where, that's, that, yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. Let's let's um let's talk about Hydrosynth because I mean obviously we all know Hydrosynth right we all know it's uh, it's been around but these two new um, ones that they've brought out the seventy three key um, poly touch deluxe and also the um, the small one which they're calling the um, I'm gonna Explorer. Grab it's just up there. Okay. I'm gonna grab. Yeah. While he grabs it, beautiful. Um, guys, get your Hydrosynth questions um, in chat queued up because um, I don't know if you guys know, but Ken is actually an employee now of um, of uh, ASM. So ASM. Um, yeah, so he knows a lot about this stuff. So fire your questions. If you don't actually have a hydrosynth, it might be a good opportunity for you to ask your questions. Um, so get them ready. Um, right, beautiful. He's, he's not back yet. <laughs> what I'll do is while, while he's gone, Let's just refresh our memory, okay? So this is the um, this is the seventy three key deluxe. Isn't that a thing of beauty? And and mm. the cool thing about it is that that little spot on the right hand side is actually not that little. So you could actually put uh, like an S twenty four hundred or something there. Um, it's actually really really cool. Um, these things are built like anything as well. Ken will probably tell you in a sec. And the other one that they brought out is the Explorer, which is the one that we're talking briefly about before. This is the one that's got me excited, only because I'm a real big fan of, of small form factor keyboards. I love them. They're good fun. Anyway, um, we'll go to Ken. Let him talk about it. Whoa, he's okay. got the tape measure. Yeah, so I'm going to that space real quick. It's about... 13 and a half inches. Yeah. So the, the, the little so let's be clear. side where you can... Let's be clear. We're talking, and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the gap, not anything else here. <laughs> let's be clear, right? Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like this the guy right here. Now in Elson. <laughs> so this, I don't know how, how my... Uh, how my camera looks so yeah it's picking up well it looks day. beautiful actually your camera's really good today nice okay. i i think them ones are going to sell like hotcakes i do too yeah i do, I yeah, I really do. Like, no, they're going to fly off the company shelves. Uh, company man aside i can say that like when i saw the um like the the early drawings and everything i was like yep this is going to be like huge this is going to be like micro cord territory you know mm. um mm. the 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 thing about this that i'm that i'm personally really enjoying because everybody knows that i make um i make everything battery powered um just like i've got a ultra nova i stuck a usb battery on it i've got you know i've got a battery power video for my force all that kind of stuff i love battery power stuff because yeah same you know i'm in here a lot and then sometimes i just want to be outside and like just kind of sit and noodle around or be on the couch that kind of thing so it's really like super fun to program on and it's not like uh some of the smaller gear that you get it's like a real chore to program and this is not like it's it's actually like i can program on this thing just like i can the the, the bigger units uh, i'm popping some batteries in it right now yeah so the, the, it, there's like two less controllers or something, isn't there? So it's not that hard. I had a look at the video. Oh, beautiful. So it's just four double, double yeah, A's, yeah. is it? Four double A's? If I, if I turn it on, there we go. So you'll see, it's going to be upside down, but you know, you get the, you get the gist. There we go. So it's turning on now. You can see it. Yeah, there we go. So it just booted up. It takes about maybe, I don't know, three seconds to boot up, something yeah, like that, not long. Really quick. Um, and uh, yeah, so I will say this because I do get questions about like, oh, well, how long does the battery last and all that? Um, I don't know 100%. So I'm not like really saying, oh, yeah, it's it's definitely this. It's definitely that. But I can tell you um, I've done I've done things where like I just like set something on the keys and let, leave the or like latch the arpeggiator or whatever and just leave it running with headphones plugged in. And I'm getting over three hours easy. So mm. um, 
it's it's not something that's like dying on me right away, which is which was a challenge because at first when we first started doing it, it's like that engine does take some power. Like it's not um, it's not slim down engine wise it's, or chip wise from from the other units. So it does, you know, you know, it, it, it'll pull some juice out of it, but we got it optimized really well. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, a quick yeah, question, so, so quick the, question, Ken. Uh, yeah. Future World Machines mm -hmm. in the chat has asked, is the case plastic or on the Explorer? Yeah, yeah. So the casing on the outside is plastic, but the underside is all solid metal. And when I say solid metal, I mean, it's like, so I want to say this is, this is probably the prototype type I have here. And one of the one of the main changes that we had to do was we actually had to slim the metal down a little bit from that because it was so heavy. Um, it's, it's, it's a very thick metal that's underneath of there because it's, you know, with polyphonic aftertouch, if you're going left and right and all that, you can't have the key bed flexing and moving around um, in order to stay precise. So underneath it's, you know, it's really, um, like that's like a it's it's this really solid metal underneath of there and you can feel it like when you lift it up the unit doesn't feel like um what's something that i can kind of compare it to weight wise like a um yeah ms101 yeah yeah i've got the M the ms101 there it's it's pretty similar in weight to that um i'd that's say the top plastic is is a bit more um that's metal Feels underneath as well. What's that? The MS-101's got metal underneath it as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's it's nice and sturdy. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like, like um, hollow or anything like that when you're messing with it. Um, but the uh, the polyphonic aftertaps, let me see if I can plug this thing in real quick. And let me, I'm going to pull my System 8 off of the desk here and I'll, I'll throw it up in front. Uh, yeah, the things I do, right? Yeah, we love you. Don't worry. <laughs> the checks in the mail. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for being discombobulated, man. Like, I don't know what I was thinking last night. <laughs> There's my check in the mail too, Rums. I've got, I've got something, yeah. something for, coming for you, paid. Andy. So don't, don't jump the gun. <laughs> I've got something coming for you. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, just to let you know, the only, the only real, like, the only differences that I think you would feel if, uh, if you were to pick one of these things up, uh, compared to the desktop, which would obviously be the next one up, um, would be the fact that it does not have the CV mod inputs on it. Um, so let me see if I can show you. Here's the rear. Yep. Obviously. And I'm trying to like see my own image here. I don't know how much I can. Oh, here we are. Sorry, I'm on the opposite side. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you still have your your pitch and gate and mod one, mod two out. You just don't have the mod one, mod two inputs, which I have to be completely honest with you. I don't use very often. Maybe I should use that more, but I really don't because mm. five envelopes and five LFOs. If I can't modulate enough with that. There's probably something wrong with my patch. Uh, let me. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna adjust something real quick. Can you hear that or no? Yeah, we can. Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. So that is coming in on what channel though? <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, I think that's 13. It I'm says. It says channel 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 guest two Ken over here. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm looking for, for my <laughs> yeah, I know, my I know. mode too. I know. Uh, let me I'm just messing my, with you. My mic down just a bit too. Check, check. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So I'm going to look, look at all the things I'm doing here. I'm going to go. It's nice that I can actually show my desk now because like for a long time I've had to hide this stuff. <laughs> so... And the, the great, you, you can hear that, right? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I have it turned down low in my studio. So, But, like, the great thing about this, let me see if I can kind of make it so you can see what I'm doing here. So, if you notice right now I'm doing this, if I can play with my pinky, this aftertouch. Really easily. So, it's it doesn't take a lot of force to be able to use the aftertouch. Um, which I think is really important when you're when you're doing like you know complex chords or whatever, um, and you know, or if or even if you're not like a piano player, like you know maybe your pinky isn't as strong as the rest of your hand, like you should be able to. So and this one's not even finally created either. So there's a lot of refinement that goes into into building these things as far as calibration and all that. This is also new. Uh, these are, is there enough light on the camera or no? Uh, it, it's a bit dark there, but everything Let's else looks it. okay. Okay. I have a, I have another light, but here I can do this section. Check this out. Maybe this will help. Okay. So yeah, yeah you can better. see that I have, you know, the pitch and mod wheel and these are kind of like slightly slewed. So. Mm -hmm. So it has like a kind of feel like an actual pitch wheel would have as opposed to just being, you know, capacitive and on off kind of feel. So it, it, it kind of glides up and back down just just a tiny bit. Not not super much to where it gets in the way you're playing, but to where it kind of makes it feel like a real pitch wheel. So that's pretty nice. So These buttons are a little bit different. So, so Ken, you're saying it's kind of the, it, it's still flat, but when you're using it, it's kind of like an exponential sort of curve on it. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, this right here, like these buttons are all like soft touch buttons now, as opposed to, um, having the, the plastic caps on them. So that's yeah. a little bit different, but they feel really nice. Like, you know, you can hop around through it and, you know, it's the same as the hydrogen. So you, literally the navigation and all this is the exact same. I mean, I have this one right here, you know, yeah. and that navig all those navigation buttons are the same. Um, and then mod matrix is still here. Get into the mod matrix, and you just page through, you know. Which is the same thing that you do on the, on the bigger version as well, you know. So yeah. it's it's really easy. You don't have the light rings around here, but what you do have is if you look at uh this right here. Oh, that's really blurry, isn't it? Hold on, let me see if I can make it so it's not. Try not to be too shaky. But if you look, there's like a little bar on the end there that will show you yeah, the depth it. of your oh, – yeah. So – and this is the big one. We got a big one. Just to give you a little bit of size input here. So this is the deluxe. And I often – You'll see that there's no logo there. That's actually just a, I put a mouse pad there um, because I tend to keep my magic trackpad on it because, you know, this whole thing slides under my desk. Um, yeah, so this is not crazy deep, which is kind of important because a lot of the larger keybed synths and whatnot are super deep. This is no deeper than the regular Hydra synth. So if you have a stand like, like this is the um, Zor, um studio yes desk which is a really compact desk it still fits underneath so i'll show you it still fits underneath there just fine mm, nice beautiful of course it's all you know it's all polyphonic after touch and all that good stuff and then you have the upper and lower so you can now combine things and i'll see if i'll see if i have um see which uh, can you hear this yeah so uh just to give you a really quick because i don't want to hold the show up with this stuff um but I, I i will give you just a quick example of a nice patch
take the, uh, the balance knob and I turn this all the way up, I'm going to get the string. The balance knob all the way to the left, I get the lower sound, which is the bell. So, nice layering there. And uh, I also really like, you know, th th this is just like really bread and butter kind of thing, but piano and strings. Um, so being able to just like, um, wiggle your hand like that and get cool expression, super fun. You know, yeah, it, it like... makes it, it just seems like you're a lot better than you are. And yeah, here I've got a, um, an arpeggiator on one of the layers. So if I do this. Actually, I have to step up. So, let me set this back here. Rawr. Sorry for being all discombobulated. But, so, yeah, that's another thing that I found when I was at KnobCon is a lot of people still haven't used a regular hydrosynth. So, there's a lot of, like, customer education that kind of needs to happen as far as... Um, what the actual basic synth engine in it can do. A lot of people are not aware that it has five LFOs that are actually sequencers um, that that will sequence pitch, uh, you know, in semitones. It's got uh, just incredible synthesis inside of there. I mean, I had I had a uh, Jorb from Jorb Loves Gear, and I was just showing him some of the tips and tricks that you can do with it. Like you can send MIDI CCs. From not just, you know, any of the, the panel uh, knobs, such as like going to filter or going to, um, you know, an oscillator section and having it see the CCs that way. But the macros can send CCs. So you can control your doll and stuff and then name it that way. Like say like, oh, this is my serum cutoff, whatever, you know. Um, you can control stuff like that. But more importantly, it treats MIDI CCs in the mod matrix the same as anything else. So you can be sending, let's say you set up a mod matrix of envelope five to MIDI CC 74, right? And you have that MIDI channel to your VST plugin. Your envelope five now will be controlling the filter cutoff of your plugin, you know? Um, so you can be sending out and you can also send back in. You could have MIDI CC as a source in your mod matrix as well. So if you have like an LFO from Ableton Live, you can set that to come into Hydrosynth on a specific MIDI CC and then you have even more LFOs and that sort of thing, you know? Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, look, I'm really, really excited about that uh, Explorer. And I mean, I'm just being selfish here. <laughs> I know there's other people that are, that would be ex super, super excited about the deluxe as well, because we were just talking about players synths. I mean, that really is a player synth. Uh, it really is. It's beautiful. Um, Yes. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I, what what else kind of can do you feel was really sort of a standout um, at Nobcom? Um, other, obviously, uh, Hydrosynth was. Um, but yeah, was there any sort of anything else that you felt was a, a standout there? This is going to sound. This is going to sound super biased, mm, and I got coffee on my. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I'm being genuine when I say it. Um, so another aspect of KnobCon that was really wild for me, this was my first KnobCon on the opposite side of the booth, right? Usually whenever I go to KnobCon or I go to NAM or anything like that, I'm in your position and I'm walking around, I'm talking to my friends and I'm getting interviews, that sort of thing. This was the first year where I was setting up the booth, you know? Uh, so it was just me and, and Glenn Darcy setting up our booth. But directly next to me is one of my absolute best friends of the last 10 years, uh, Corey Banks of Modbat Modular. He was literally my, my booth neighbor. Um, so it was kind of surreal and it was his first year being on the other side of, of the booth as well. And we met on uh, the NAM show floor. 
So it was really surreal, and it was in his hometown. Um, he lives in L.A. now, but he's from Chicago. So he's setting up his booth. I'm setting up my booth, and it's both of our first times, and it, it was just really cool. But I have to say his Osiris module um, kind of was one of the absolute top things of the show. The fact that he has the Osiris module and that he had the little cases for his, his modules as well. But the, um, the Osiris wavetable module is really cool. I've been um, – talking with him about that for, for a good while, obviously. And it just does some interesting things that I really enjoy. Um, one of the things that I really like about it is that it has this ability to change character. You can drop how high fidelity it is. You can drop it down to a lo-fi oscillator, which so like, why is that a big deal? But when you have your sound source is this kind of like low, actually it, in a way, in a very loose way, it's funny because I feel like that's something that was a little bit of a trend at Superbooth as well with Waldorf announcing their uh, their M. You have the ability to drop the oscillator um, fidelity down in that as well. Um, but this, the way that um, the the Osiris does it is a little bit more intensive because it adds like a, like a noise jitteriness to the signal and everything. It makes it almost like there's old school, uh, unstable clocking. I have a, um, an SQ 80 behind me mm. and the SQ 80 kind of does that where it's like, you know, it's a bit waveforms in there and the, the clock in it is kind of janky. So like when you, when you go low on it, you can hear like the, the waveforms kind of wiggling and, and doing this this wackiness of a little bit, and his oscillator captures that, which is really great. And yeah, it yeah. does it it does it probably. It's not oh this is just poor design. <laughs> like no, it's and it's it, the the engine in it. I should note is designed by S, formerly of Electron. Right. He okay. did he did the Digitone. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, so and that the, was the, really cool. So uh, this is the the Modbap guys, and, and obviously Corey um, behind all this sort of stuff. We we actually showed the uh, Osiris. Was it last week, guys? I can't remember. Was it last week or the week before? Um, we showed it recently, anyway. So um, I think we showed it. I think we showed it last week. Yes. I think it might have been last week. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, say good day to Corey for me if you bump into him. Um, we do show his stuff on here. Um, okay. Should we go into um, obviously? Questions for Ken have been coming through uh, about the hydrosynth. Um, keep them coming, and I'll and I'll keep uh, shooting them through to Ken. I, we've got a couple more things to show in terms of news, so let's go back to that. Um, and uh, actually, before I do, before I do that, um, I should be polite and ask uh, Darren or Andrew if you had any questions for Ken about the hydrosynth, because um, I didn't give you guys a chance to ask him. Oh, questions. Oh, right. Uh, health. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd actually quite like to ask about the keyboard that's on the uh, Deluxe. Uh, I know it's 73. Um, compared to that Studio Logic, which is actually, it seems that the 73 now has got piano type hammer action keys, I'm assuming that it is just a, a weighted synth style keyboard on the on the 73. Semi weighted Deluxe. Oh. Is that right? <clears throat> No, just semi weighted. All of all the, um, all the hydrosynth key beds are semi weighted. Um, that's something that wasn't ever really advertised before. Um, I think it was just one of those things where it's like you you have so many other things going on. You're like, oh yeah, it's semi weighted. You know, and I I looked at the Sweetwater page and the Sweetwater page actually said synth action, and it's not. It's semi weighted. Um, so that's something to right. just be aware of. The, the mm -hmm. differences in the key bed from the, the, uh, from the standard, which is up here, and I can show you. So, um, so yeah, so that's, yep. that's the size of, of the regular unit, right? And if you look, so that's 49 keys, and then the control panel stops because the whole synth stops, right? The 73 is the, literally the exact same layout, um, just so people are knowing. So it's not like squished to one side or anything like that. Um, the, oh, the, the key action also has note off velocity, whereas, mm. um, that one up there on the oh. wall does not have note off velocity. The little one also has note off velocity. Um, just, you know, to, to squash people asking 
before they ask. Um, no, that cannot be added to the other one. It's it's literally a hardware thing. <clears throat> so the the key bed itself also was refined as far as like the machining of the plastic, like how everything kind of fits together is a little bit smoother and nicer now. Um, there's a little bit improved dynamic range. These are all kind of subtle things. It's not like, oh, like this key bed was bad and this key bed is, is light years better. No, that key bed's great. But, you know, after producing it for, what, three, three almost four years now, um, we've refined it, you know. So it's, it's just, uh, yeah, semi-weighted. And feels really nice. The, the spring tension has been slightly adjusted to, to cope with 73 keys and all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. All right. Darren, did you have a question? Yeah, answer. Uh, no, because I'm just still looking for, I'm still looking forward to get the Explorer because uh, obviously you can see there's no way I could get, <laughs> I get the big one in here, but I was, it's originally yes. I was going to get the desktop version when it first came out. I bet. Um, that obviously didn't happen, but the Explorer is just like, it's just small enough to fit in here. And it's uh, like I say, it's after touch as well on a small keyboard. Mm, poly after touch. You say? It's not just after Great. touch. Poly no, after yeah, touch. Poly after yeah. Touch. Exactly. Poly after touch on a yeah. small keyboard that I can fit in the studio without having to worry about putting a like it does it's not like a keyboard in. It doesn't feel fiddly. So like you know, some of the small beds are are like kind of fiddly and annoying. It doesn't feel like that. Um like it's it's actually playable, um, which makes me happy. But I will say I don't have sausage fingers. I know some people like they just can't do small keys at all because they just have like massive hands. And yeah, I'm not that dude. Like, you know, I got pretty, pretty narrow fingers. <laughs> so take whatever I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have reasonably oh, sorry, I fat fingers. fingers anyway. I have reasonably fat fingers. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I have a problem. Do you, I've, I use a JDXI. JDXI has got pretty, pretty skinny keys on it and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Oh, and the second, no, the, the uh, other thing I've as well about the Explorer. No, I've got little that. skinny fingers. And I can't, I can't <laughs> is... play my microcore, for example. I just can't play the bloody thing. So I'm glad you said, Ken, that on the Explorer, the keys are a bit bigger because the... the... Yeah, they are. Oh, anyway, they're, they're, they're... Sorry, Darren. Yeah, Darren was talking. <laughs> well, no, I was gonna, <laughs> what I was going to say is that the main thing as well uh, on the Explorer is I can actually take it away with, you know, battery operated, so I can just sit down somewhere, or I can sit on my park bench if I wanted to. So you that's would not yeah, exactly. Let it lie. So Ken's measuring the keys now. Look, you got him. He's, yeah, he's like... just, <laughs> got an old uh, mini lab. Uh, I think this might even be perfect. Oh, yeah, the mini lab. The mini lab has the same keys that are on the key step. Yeah. So these keys, they feel different. They're close to the same size. They're not exactly the same size, but they're pretty close. Um, I'm just kind of, maybe I can. Yeah, I think I think our keys are maybe just a hair bigger. Um, let's see if I can do this. This this is the exclusive right here, man. Yeah. Who Look else is for you? We love you, mate. We love you. And if you <laughs> and if you look, it's like these keys are not the same. Um, like just just the the throw of them is is different. If it feels, you know, and, and I'm not I'm not down talking this at all because I actually really like the key step in the Mini Lab series. Um, I, I use it a ton. I, I use a key step Pro as like one of my main sequencers. Um, but the the key feel is completely different. Like. Mm feels like this feels like a large synth um and this has like that springy synth feel like a um what would it be like what, what synth what synth i know that has just that spring feel to it. um maybe like a yamaha like, yeah. like a yamaha j j maybe i don't know hey um, i got a, i got some more questions for you um why why are you there ken um, Adoziz yep. asked, is the name Hydra, does it come from the Marvel comics? I bet you've been asked that before. <laughs> uh, no, it does not, though I am a super Marvel nerd. Um, I will say that basically early on, we, 
I don't, I don't know how much of the story I'm allowed to tell. So I'll just be careful about it, but I'll just say, um, when we were trying to come up with names, we were, we were, we were really trying to think of something that, um, would be kind of like worldwide and, and, uh, a, an original prototype name was a Hydro V and Glenn was like, it's not virtual anything. We don't want to have V in this because that's not what we're doing. Um, you know, this is like, this is what it is. It's not virtual. And I really am like, was thinking about like mythology and I was, uh, looking into not just Greek mythology, but like Chinese mythology and all. And one name that kind of came up was, uh, I, I like the idea of like like water because there's just so many things you can do with it. It's fluid and like when you're scanning wavetables and all that, it's it's very uh, when you're morphing it, it's very fluid. So I was kind of thinking about that and I was like Leviathan. And then it was like, that is way too difficult to pronounce and, and spell and all that. It was like, no. And then I got to thinking about the Hydra, you know, the Hydra Beast, which is in a lot of different cultures. Um, if you if you go back in history, you, you'll see the Hydra Beast is actually in a lot of different cultures. And I was like, yeah, Hydrosynth. And then I, I said that in some way to Glenn. And then I think I think it got tweaked a little bit because I don't know if I if I said it is exactly a Hydrosynth or what. But like, yeah, we, we came back around to it. There was a lot of different names being quoted. And then we kept coming back to that one. Um, and I'm really happy with it because – yeah, I am a Marvel Comics nerd, so like I, my, it was actually my friend, um, my friend Steel from uh, D Steel from MSX Audio, who when when we told him about it, he was like, "Oh, hail Hydra!" and I was just like, "Yeah." <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, it had to be said. Um, Corrosive Abusers yeah. asked, um, "Are the outputs balanced?" Now I'll go to the next question as well because that one's going to be an easy answer. The next question is from Kent. Now, Kent, um, you might know from. Um, being the guy that repairs all of Dave Spears' stuff from Sonic State. So Kent's asked, on the Deluxe, is it possible that the firmware may be able to support polychaining with the original Hydrosynth, as I have no intention of getting rid of her when it's the Deluxe turns up? So he, he's basically going to have the two. He's going to have the, the desktop the and the Deluxe. Um, yeah, or the original, right, so sorry. It, so... The question is, is it possible that the firmware may be able to support polychaining? And I want to say like, I want to say no to be mean and just be like, no, because it already does that. So it's, it, it, it's not possible that it might be able to, no, it already does that. <laughs> so yes is the I'm answer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, um, the, and the yeah, outputs, you can choose, outputs are balanced, right? You can change uh, yeah, yeah. So, and it has four outputs on it. So it has yeah. the main left, right, which is also like, you know, that's the mix. That's also the upper. If you plug into the lower, you get split out. So you have four outputs on there. Um, Beautiful. Okay. Um, kind of right. Yeah, yeah. And key right. splits, there's two keys that are done. Let, let's go. Let's go into um, some more stuff because I've got to get through this. Otherwise, we'll be on the show for hours, and I, I don't want to be. Um, we've got some tip-top audio stuff to show, uh, which I think is good to show because uh, everyone likes a bit of uh, Eurorack. So we'll start with um, this is the Mod FX. Uh, let's just play the video. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> what the hell happened there? Oh. Wrong button. Sorry about that. There we go. Right, what we're going to do is... Um, hey everyone, my name is Attila, and in today's videos we're going to take... I'm just going to go... So this is basically... I'll just quickly show you guys um, the module quickly before... Actually, I'll, I'll do it this way. It's easier. If I show you guys the modules, there's two modules I want to show. Um, the mod effects, and then the, um, the other one's called the FSU, um, which I'll show in a sec. So... Um, We'll do the mod effects first. Now what this is, is a chorus, flange, and um, uh, three banks of modulations. Um, what's the other thing? Flange and da, 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 da. Anyway, let's have a quick look. Here we go, chorus bank. Effect for electronic music and many classic scenes such as Selena's or Juno's use chorus. Go 
turn up controls the uh, speed of the secondary LFO. And this is probably a good part for me to mention about the uh, mono source input on these uh, effect units to make sure you understand why and for what use these mods of the uh, effect algorithm. Oh, I wish you didn't talk so much. I just want to hear it. Um, here we go. We're going to do the flanger. And the last thing is a filter bank. So let's go to that. Hopefully the video plays. Bank. These are filter based effects, but not your typical low or high pass type that are usually found in a modular system. Uh, they include a couple of classic analog all pass filters. Right, so that's the first that's the first module. The other one I want to show you is the FSU, which uh, is the other one that they're releasing at the same time. It's worth checking this one out. So we'll go back to that. Um, and uh, play. All right, welcome back. So we're going to keep going and the uh, second three uh, illuminated buttons for uh, bank selections. It has eight programs per bank for a total of three banks, so 24 effects in total. And it has three CV inputs for uh, modulating the uh, DSP effect parameters. So we're gonna look at the distort bank first. Uh, available effect programs. So in the uh, distort bank, tape saturation. So you can see what they've got there. Uh, let's quickly go to some audio. The best way to demo these is usually with a good drum. The filter is a low pass filter. By the way, some of these sounds are actually really, really amazing for um, Eurorack sort of level stuff. So on a, uh, a sort of a bass line. Let's get some sounds. I actually really, really, really like this module. Uh, the glitch bank, we'll go to that. So this is like a pitch, random pitch change. I reckon this would sound pretty good on some drums. It is super, super cool. Uh, there's a whole heap of other stuff in here. Like a reverse thing. And there's sound on sound bank. As long as the gain knob is on uh, maximum counterclockwise, nothing is gonna be recorded. So if I turn it up. Now we recorded that one segment and now we can start manipulating it. The filter is the playback position of the left head and the adapt is the playback position of the right head. This is starting to get into that Magneto sort of territory. All right, so that is the two tip-top uh, new modules coming out. I actually think I actually think both of them are pretty awesome. Probably the FSU would probably be more my favorite. Uh, don't know the price. Um, why don't people tell us prices? Don't know when it's available, but it is at Superbooth now, so I'm guessing it's it's imminent. I guess. Um, any questions? Yeah, so the same price as the the other ones in that range. The, the other ones in that range are about 160 pounds. Yeah, I have the the Z five thousand, and it was one hundred and sixty pounds, and it still is. And the other ones, the 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 Echoes and the Z Verb, are around the the same price. So I, I would imagine they'll they'll be similar. How do you how do you find that that module though? Is it is it living up to your expectations? Uh, oh, 
it's uh, it sounds fantastic. It really sounds lovely. The reverbs are delicious. The delays are great, and the the chorus flanging effects that, that are in the Z5000 because it's got the three different banks. But it's only you've got fewer algorithms because the Z5000 is, you know, or just multi multi effects. Uh, I have to refer to the manual to work out which one I'm picking. Uh, I've still not quite got my head around what color yeah. combination of lights means what effect, but. It doesn't really matter. You sort of press it until you get one that sort of sounds nice. But again, the actual knobs do different things depending what algorithm you're in. So you're never quite sure what they're, what they're going to do. Mm. But with these things, it's just, you know, you, you tweet them. I, I bought the Z5000 basically to be reverb. So, I mean, perhaps I should have just got the Z the Z verb. But hey, uh, I've got the Z5000 it, it, and it's it's lovely. And yes, I would consider getting others because I, I do mm. like them. I, I was actually... You know, I told you about my list of modules that I intend to get. The the echoes is is on that list. Oh wow! So if okay. I, if yeah, <clears throat> my only sort of concern about that is it, it's a delay, but I don't think there's a means of clocking. You know, synchronizing the delays to a, a, a clock input, which I think is a, a bit missing. But I, over time, I've got I've got so used to adjusting delay times to match tempos anyway that mm. I could probably manage. Oh. I think they're lovely. I really do. I think I think they're great modules, and I I, I could certainly recommend the Z five thousand to anybody that's interested in getting oh. a Euro Rack Effects module. Thanks, Andy. That's really good. Um, just quickly looking at the website, you can see they've got the two different uh, style of face plates. I do like the the coloured um, ins and outs mm. uh, on this, and notice that it's a mono in and stereo out. Um, that yeah. For me, that FSU is really, really part of my interest. I, I really like the whole distortion and, and glitching. Um, it, it's quite an aggressive, you know, if you're starting to bring sort of percussive sounds into your Eurorack, this is the sort of module for you to sort of beef up those. But look, um, I'm always a big fan of uh, modulation effects, and I've always liked flanges and choruses and, of course, phases, of course, um, which is what the filter... Um, side of that does, and obviously, this, once again, this one does the two different face plates. Okay, um, any other one else want to comment about the tip tops, or should we keep moving on? I like the fact that they're doing those new. So they did that redesign um, yep. with the white panels, which I think are gorgeous. Yeah, but a lot of people I've noticed um, in recent years have moved to like trying to make their system all black. Um, I can't say that I'm completely immune to it. I have one of my cases is almost completely black, except mm. for my tip trigger riot. Um, and I, re I really like the design of both panels. And that's like, it's like a little thing, but it's worth noting because I think that their, their redesign of like the whole aesthetic of their stuff looks great. And, um, and I think that also folds into what they're doing with the I assume you're probably going to mention it in a bit, the, the Buchla stuff, but they, they do these like little caps for the, um, you know, for where your jack goes, your cable goes into the jack and it just looks so clean. It's, yeah. I don't know. I, I really, the way that those things look, as far as that glitch module, I'm still like, <clears throat> so there's, there's one from Qubit called the, uh, the data bender. Yes. And I still don't have that in my rack, but that's like, so high up on my list of like I need to get that stuff um, and, and of course like you know the, the performer does glitch as well but before that I had to use clouds and use it in the delay mode and kind of like do some trickery to, to make it get those glitches and now it's like it, I, I'm really happy to see that glitching effects are like so common yeah because it's 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 actually like one of my favorite things. And I like to have multiple things glitching, like have your melody glitch one way, have your drums glitch a different way, that yep. kind of thing. I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it'll get to the point where that effect is saturated and, and tacky, but I really enjoy it. Yeah. It's strange too. Cause like one of the first, I think not the first, but one of the first companies to bring a Euro module out that glitch stuff up was, was Roland with their scatter module, uh, and that's going back a while now. The, um, I've got it here, it's called the Scooper. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's weird how not, not everyone's sort of gone down that route, but now it's becoming really, 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 really quite sought after. Um, Darren, Tip Top, what do, you, what do you think of the Tip Top stuff? Uh, uh, well, I have a Tip Top, um, what I forgot, Wave Folder. Uh, so, yeah. 
I, I like 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 Kevin was saying, I do like the the new look of well I say it's new, it's not that new now, is it? Uh the white um with the green and yellow uh jack plugs for in and out and I think that it just looks so much easier and nicer. Mm. Um as we're going all black, originally I was gonna go like all silver, but uh I don't mind any colour by the way now. But yeah, I like the I like the tip top stuff because I like I like the I think it was uh, the reverb one. Uh, what was it? What was the big? What was the big version of it? It's been out for a while. Um, uh, where you could get the little SD cards to put in. Can't think yes. of the name of that. I know uh, what you're talking about. ZD, oh. Z, Z, ZDSP. Yeah. Yes. Is that it? Z. That's the one. Yep. Um, I was originally going to get one of them, but then they brought out the small. Like Andrew's got one. Um, the small. You know, like almost versions of each one. I think that's that's yeah. that's much better, and it's only like you say about one one sixty. So, yeah, I do like him. I do like the tip top audio stuff. Is that the one yeah, you mean? The, the effects quality is really good. Is that the one? You that's mean, the one. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I was originally going to get one of them at one point. Mm. Quite a beefy module that one. Um, but yeah, I think some of the well, uh, that was the other reason. The, some of the new ones, it's like the, Z. the case quite much. Remembering too, we say Z, and and obviously in America they say Z. So uh, the Z verb or the Z verb from wherever you're from um, is kind of based on the on the Z DSP or the Z DSP. Um, yeah, cool. All right. Um, look, we these were kind of all the things I wanted to show. I was really really keen to get Ken on to talk about Hydrosynth and KnobCon. We've done that. Um, the, all the things that I've shown so far are, are the things that I wanted to show because it hasn't been covered a lot with the other channels that do all similar sort of things to what we do. Um, however, as I always say, um, it's always good to have other people's opinions about things that we're also very interested in because why not? We love things, we want to talk about it. And I think we mentioned it briefly before, but the Waldorf M, we've got to talk about that, surely. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, look, that that is just a, a, an incredible um, thing that they've brought out. It's a desktop synth, it's Wavetable. Yes, I know we're kind of plum for Wavetable right now, but I, I do feel we kind of need to talk about this. I know a lot of the channels have talked about it already, but um, should we just quickly refresh our memories? Um, because I think that it just it's just a beautiful thing. Um, so let's just quickly go to here. I keep missing my, my button. There we go. Yes, 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 the big red knob, everybody, the big red knob. Um, I, I really like this. Look, I think for me, whenever you buy a synth, um, it's it's always about the sound. When you actually go to the store and you plug it in and you listen to it with the headphones or you listen to it through the, the monitors there, and it, the sound really captures you, that is kind of why you're there, that's why you're listening to it. I mean... Um, I, I think what what Wardorf are doing with this is is amazing because they've got the wavetable stuff from the you know the old microwave one and the microwave two and the XL in this and it's got all those sort of classic sounds. But on top of this, they've got some new some new brains in this and they've put analog uh, filters and VCAs in this. And I think that that's kind of genius because it really it kind of um, it just makes everything sound so creamy and and pure, and I just—it's uh, kind of crazy because you know wavetable can be a bit uh, digital edge, right? But to sort of marry that with the creamy pure 
analog filters. It's 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 very very genius. And, I, and every demo that I've heard of this so far has really really impressed me. And um, someone said to me uh, yesterday or the day before, "Oh, there's so many wavetable synths. It's there's too many now." Nah, it's just like uh, the old saying: you can never have enough wavetable synths. Sorry, <laughs> this one is definitely I, on I, my radar. I think there's another angle I, I, I'd like to mention with this one, if that's all right. Uh, you're dead right. There are wavetables everywhere. Everything's got wavetables on it. And part, part of it, when you hear people scanning through wavetables, uh, I have to say it irritates me, those little nasally, tinkly things. I know that you've got to make the movement, but uh, I feel that Valdorf have got every right to chuck out as many wavetables since as they want. They're the granddaddies of it. Because mm. let's be honest, they're basically a, a, a PPG, aren't they? It's, mm. it's Wolfgang Palm. And and therefore they have a, a right to it in my view that they, they were the originators, they were the developers, and I think it's their baby. And let's be honest, every demo that you hear of this thing, it sounds fantastic. That's not always the case for for all wavetable synths. Yeah, I think it's great. Yes, it's expensive, but isn't it a thing of beauty? I I, I completely agree with you. And Andy. it's built like always. Yeah, I should mention oh, yeah. too when I talked when I talked about the filter too. It's not just any filter; it's the SSI. Uh, what is it? The two one double four. So uh, that's not just any filter either. That's that's a pretty pretty nice filter <laughs> to be putting in there. Uh, I mean, really, is they could have. Is that what was on the original PPGs? Then is that the same the same filter? Is that what they've used? Uh, you, you're sort of going out of territory for me. I don't know the answer to that. One of the people in chat might no, be able to answer that. I'm sorry. Just um, wondering. Maybe people, maybe they do. Ken, I know, I know this is kind of competitive to, to hydrosynth in, in, in a sense, but really it's a beautiful sounding wavetable synth, isn't it? Oh, you're muted, by the way. I don't think that they really occupy the same same space. Like, I don't think that they're as much of a competitor as they kind of look um, on the surface. Um, one, because of price point, and two, because of, of form factor and functionality. Um, I think that they are pretty different. That being said, um, as I said before, like I'm a fan of like gritty, like kind of lo-fi oscillators going through nice filters and all that. So on on one level, yeah, it, it scratches that itch. I do feel like price is a bit high. As you can see, I bought I bought an Iridium. Um, I love the Visa mount stuff. Like I have this one, like this floating Visa mount, so I can just move it around. I love that. Um, there's aspects of the Iridium that I don't love. Um, you know, there's build quality issues that, that I don't love, but they, on, on the M, it seems like they kind of solved that, uh, or at least changed design aspects that look a good bit different from that. Um, like, I, I'll just kind of show you like, I, and I'm nitpicking a little bit, but you know, when you spend a lot of money on a synth, you, you can, you can nitpick. So like on the screen, like you see the ribbon, mm. like see that through there, like little things like that, you know, are irritating. I've got like an encoder that's like wonky, like it kind of like drifts to the side. Um, I had to like physically try to like bend it into place and whatnot because I did. I certainly didn't want to send it out because um, that would take probably a lifetime and then some to get back. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just the way the world is right now. But uh, no, the, I like what it is, and I love the fact that it's going through those Rossum filters. Um, I think that particular filter chip is a really great filter that is extremely dependent on gain staging uh, to sound right and sound good and yeah. to um, pull out the character that you want. And if you look at the specs on this thing, it does have. It says that it has gain control for all that, so like you can overdrive the filter like in a controllable way. I really want to lay hands on it. Um, yeah. I, I'm I'm interested. In, I don't know that I would buy one, but I certainly would like to play one. So I, I'm into it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. All right, beautiful. Um, Darren, quick word about this, or move on. Move, uh, well, I like Waldorf stuff. I've got a soft spot for Waldorf, um, Dreadbox, and Hydrosynth, which I haven't got yet. So I've got a soft spot for that. And the uh, Pulse 2 is all over my album. So, yeah, I like it. I've not got it, so I don't know. I can't yeah. criticise it. or But it, it looks nice and it sounds nice. It's it, a big plus to start with. 
Another plus for you too is it's a decent form factor, so it's another one that you could squeeze in there if you needed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not going to take up the uh, six foot room in the in the studio, so that's yeah. always a good bonus. All right, well, take the small studio. Speaking of small, and we're we're all happy. Speaking of good form factors, what about this? The Maya uh, M nine hundred uh, is the other mm. one that I wanted to bring up because look, um, this sort of stuff, it, um, you know. Oh, by the way, I should sorry, I should mention before I go into that. Just give me a sec. Um, Eighteen hundred and seventy nine euros is the price for the uh, Waldorf uh, Valdorf M. If you are interested, um, that does include VAT. That's that the price. Only so so I did. I should mention that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that does include VAT. So uh, for people who don't live in that world, hundred US. Yeah, it's look. It, it's not surprising. Put it that way. That's, yeah. That's about what I'd expect. See, that's where I'd probably go. Mm. Mm. But this I'll is going think. to be probably twice the price of that. Now, this is actually quite interesting. This has got me interesting for a number of different reasons. Um, the Maya M900, it's the XVA. What, what's interesting about this is the whole thing is digital. Uh, it's based on a um, – it actually runs on a Linux operating system. I, I love this sort of nerdy stuff, right? Um, but it's got – real-time extensions in this. It's 16 voice, four-part multi-timbral, um, and it's it's not just a wavetable synth, it's a virtual analog, it's got um, other types of synthesis in there as well, uh, which we'll get to in a sec, like for example, FM and, um, and stuff like that. It features two digital oscillators, it has multi-mode filter, um, all of this stuff is digitally generated, of course, plus it's got an arpeggiator sequencer, a clip launcher, which is actually really interesting. Um, because the way the clip launcher works on this, it's like you've got all these, these four different parts, right? And you can actually launch clips of sequences in each of these parts. And uh, I don't know if I've seen a desktop synth with that, like that's not a groove box, okay? So this is a distinction. This is, this is basically a synth, this is not a groove box, but I don't think I've seen a desktop synth have a clip launcher in it. It's quite quite an interesting addition. Uh, it does have mod matrix, it has drums and it has effects. Um, and this will be available next year. So we're kind of a little bit premature, but this was at Superbooth. It's uh, 3,000 euros they're saying is the guide price on, on that. Now, I don't know if I got, did I get a video of this or not? No, I didn't get a video of this. Um, look, there is, there is some, um, some basic videos that they've shown at Superbooth. You guys have probably already seen them in it. I just wanted to bring this up because wh what do you guys think of this? This one has kind of come out of left field, hasn't it? Um, does anyone have any sort of, any more knowledge about the Maya than M900? Because this really, I've never even heard of this thing until now, so. I think I had heard of the Eurorack module, but this thing kind of surprised me a little bit, but I just want to say, I disagree with you. <laughs> you said, uh, I think you said something to the effect of like, it's not a groove box, but it's not a groove box in the way that when UAD went to NAM to show their not doll doll, <laughs> it, it is a groove box. It's just, it's just the UI is flipped to where instead of having the groove aspect at the forefront, the synth aspect is at the forefront. Like I, to me, it's absolutely a groove box. Um, right. It's a groove box with a really, really nice synth in it, you know, four part synth in it. But yeah, that sucker, like to me, it's, it's like a kind of like a modern MC 909, but with like, you know, the synth is very much like the focus on it. Yeah. Well, they're calling it a desktop synthesizer. So that's kind of where I'm getting my, my, you know, no, I hear you. Yeah. When you start doing clip launching and have drum parts and all this stuff. It's like, it's yeah, that's, box. that's what a group box. It's group box. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's, that's why I brought it up, but yeah. Um, and then we, we're splitting hairs here, but like, yeah. I mean, look, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. and an MC seven hundred seven is a synthesizer. Let's not let's not argue about it. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, what about this, um, Andy? You know, this here is yet another interesting synth that's hit the market. Yeah, uh, I, I saw some of the demos of this and some of the videos and thought it just sounded great. It looks amazing. Once again, I think it's going to be really expensive and, and out of my price range, but yeah, great little box. Yeah, fabulous. What, what do you think, Andy, just uh, if now that you know that the back end of this, it's basically a computer <clears throat> underneath, right? It's it's a Linux operating yeah. system. And obviously, you know, there's been hours of code and people have put, you know, years and hours of development into, you know, to 
develop the operating system and the synthesizer and all that sort of stuff. But the fact that this is this is basically a computer underneath, um, yeah, it's it's this kind of almost encroaching on the whole VST and a synth sort of territory. You know, we've always kind of wanted the ability for that, and there's been a few people that have attempted to do that. Um, yeah. Where does this kind of sit? Well, it's a, it's a digital synth, isn't it? I mean, uh, digital synths have basically been computers in boxes for, well, yep. since digital synths came out. I mean, yeah, the Yamaha DX7 was basically just computer chips and so on and so on. Uh, I think they've obviously got better and better and the, and the sound is is refined and things. But, but why not? I mean, that idea of having a box which you can load a load of uh, VST plugins into and actually just play as a standalone synth, I think is a great idea and I wish somebody would really nail it. <laughs> it is a good idea. It is. Uh, I mean, there's been a few people attempted it. All right, so um, we've reached kind of most of the end of the gear stuff, and we did c cover a bit of ground that people have been talking about on the other shows. There, there was one other thing that kind of sparked my interest during the week, and that was Dope Fur. I, mean, I always love seeing Dope Fur release stuff, and they uh, look, probably – someone said uh, in a post recently – if all the Eurorack companies went bust but one, which one would you like? And someone mentioned Dopefer. And the pro it's probably not a bad answer because these guys have got so many modules, so mm. much to choose from, and they probably mm. will get you out of jail for most of the stuff you want to do. And not only that, they keep yep. releasing them, and they've released some really, really interesting things. The A100 um, chassis uh system that they've got they've got a new keyboard now which is really really interesting it's actually not just cv it's midi uh which is in it's really really cool because that means you can use it for other things other than just cv duties um but the okay so these are all the different modules you've got the um the frequency shifter from the left to right right frequency shifter you've got the dual three-way uh crossover the quad vc randomizer there's a there's a light control for cv uh, and some people who do VG, VDJ stuff love this sort of stuff. And then there's the uh, rotary switch stuff. Rotary switch stuff is really, really cool too when you, uh, when you want to sort of cross-changing um, cross in your, in your Eurorack setup. They, they're actually really handy, those things. But the one out of all of these that really kind of got me, my ears pricked up, Nick actually was doing the video with this, uh, it was the frequency shifter. That thing is is nuts. It's kind of like a like it's got two ring modulators in it and you're kind of crossing between them. Um, it's a really, really cool idea in this module. And uh, I did like the control, the controllability of the ring mod in itself um, was actually quite intuitive. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you those um, because that was really kind of the last thing that kind of you know, spreaked my interest anyway. What do you guys think? Yes, yeah, good chat. I need Good's to build out one of, those, one of those dope for systems as a like a dedicated dope for poly system, man. Because he he does some polyphonic stuff really well, <laughs> and um, you know, for modular, which I've done, I've done my modular as a four voice before, and I hated it like with a passion. It was like the worst idea ever. And, um, but the way that he does it okay. with his system is much cleaner. Um, yeah, I, I really, yeah, I, I could, I, I could agree with that. That question is too difficult though. The whole like, Oh, if you could have just <laughs> one step, yeah, I mean, that's way too difficult, to answer, it is. but that's a good, that's a good pick. I mean, yeah, that's, it, Wait, there's so many great, and they're been, really affordable. Too. He's been there from the, the dope start, for stuff, hasn't he? Right. So. Yeah, it's, it was his, wasn't it? Uh, it's, uh, Derp for originated it. So if they were there at the start, perhaps they should be last man standing. Yeah. Actually, or not a bad... person standing. Last person standing. Sorry, Ken... to be conclusive. Ken's on the money, though, for polyphonic uh, setup because Derp for do a lot of quad a lot of quad gear. So you've got quad VCAs, quad fielders, quad, quad, quad. And the way that they build, build their modules is actually quite... Um, quite well ergonomic. So in terms of the way you patch from one module to another... It, it follows the same sort of linear design. So it, it would actually make a lot of sense to go with like, if you wanted to do like a four voice polyphonic setup, that would be, you know, real quick and easy. Um, you can, and obviously you could double up to make it eight voice. You'd have two quads, quite easy to do. Uh, I do like that actually, it's um, quite nice. And so, look, even some of their simplistic designs, like I recently bought their 
uh, spring reverb module. Um, it's just, it's, it's actually really well made. It's so cheap, but it's, it's beautifully made. It's really nice. So, and it sounds, and none cool. of their, none of their stuff has, has the issues. Um, you know, you know, everything is dedicated. So like nothing is this thing where you're like, you're like, Oh, okay. Now I've changed an algorithm and I don't know what it, what a knob does. All of their stuff is like, yeah. What you see is what you get. And I actually love that because I've gotten plenty of modules where it's like, you know, okay, well, now I'm in this mode, now I'm in that mode. Mm. And I find that when I'm in my modular, like probably about nine out of 10 times, if a module does that, I don't like using it or it only stays in one mode and that's it because yeah. I don't have time to memorize every little thing and then come back to it three months later and still remember what that is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, look, um, I, I, you know, there was a comment in chat. Uh, some some say they don't they don't like the look of the dope for modules. They don't, you know, they look probably not as sexy as some others. But um, th that's his that's his design. I mean, it's kind of he's had. That I think design. when you do it, it's good though. Like when you do a complete dope for a system, it looks really nice. And their vintage mm -hmm. their vintage panel sets look really nice too, where they do them in black. I like the look of that yeah. stuff, but um, I'm not a fan of the knob caps is, is probably the, the main thing for me. And that's easily changed. You know what I mean? It's like, go buy some, go buy some new knobs and, and you're pretty much good to go. But I kind of like, like that, you know, Oh, I'm putting on a lab coat. <laughs> this is my, like, yeah. you know, like that's, that's the aesthetic of it. And oh, you and missed that I before, didn't you? We, you missed the funny yeah. side before that. This guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of dig it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, that, that's the part of part of the joy of the modular is like when I have somebody come into my studio who's not familiar with it, and they look at it, and then they look at me like I'm absolutely insane, and I'm like, "Yelp." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, hey, Ray. for me, for me, uh, it's it's not necessarily about a company. Um, it's more about the function and what that module gives you. And for me, I have got so many different companies of modules in here. Uh, they're all doing things that make me excited. And that's, and I think that's the most important thing that share the love amongst all this. It's not just about Dofer. Dofer are awesome, but there's also, we talked today, we talked about um, Chaos Devices. We talked about Tip Top Audio. You know, they're all, they're all really, really great companies. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of these companies are actually really, really small businesses. They um, mm -hmm. they they don't have anywhere near the sort of turnover turnover and uh, sort of volumes of of sales that some of the bigger synth companies get. So um, you know it, what they do for the little money that they 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 pull through is pretty incredible. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, we've reached kind of all that sort of peak of news and everything. How did we go? Did we, the chatties? I got to bring one thing up, man. Them. I, I, I got to bring oh, one little thing up. Yeah. Um, did, you talk about the, did you talk about the Tip Top Bookless stuff? No, we didn't. No, no I that's, think we, that's well worthy of a mention. That, yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's, let's just please. Yeah, go for it. Dude, that, that's the thing that got me like freaking out. I'm not even going to lie. I So I'm going to Chuck Levin's, uh, which is in, in the States here. It's a, it's a really great um, store. And I'm... Um, I'm going there Monday to do some demos and all. And I know uh, the owner there and I hit him up immediately. Like you better get this and you better set it aside for me. <laughs> like <laughs> you know, when I, so, so tip top is doing the Bukla 200 mm -hmm. and they're doing your rack form. That's, they got the caps, right. That we were talking about. And the, the rumor that I had heard is that the reason they originally started doing those caps is because they were originally going to do Surge uh, in Eurorack. And I guess that fell apart and now Surge is doing Eurorack. But the fact that they're doing the book with the Bukla name and the Bukla look, the fonts, all that, and it sounds great from the video that I heard, I was very much like, okay, I need to hear this in person because it already sounds great. Um, I am so excited because when I saw it, my initial thought was looking at their, it's the most basic dual oscillator that they have. When I looked at it, I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be 
easy $400 just because it's got the Buchla name, Buchla look. And, you know, even though it's not a complex oscillator or anything like that, it's just a dual oscillator. That's going to be $400 because of that Buchla price tag. And then I saw the price. It's saying 160 to 200 and I lost my mind. Yep. They're doing, yep. they're doing the quad <laughs> loop. I'm like, dude, I'm completely all on board. I'm going to have that whole system. There's not even a doubt in my mind. So, some people are going to be like, yeah, but you know, it doesn't, it's not going to follow the Buchla standards. And you know, so it's not a true Buchla because of that. I don't care. I'm having that. That whole thing is like, yes, all yes, all day long. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited. Super excited. And, and you were talking about the, the, um, dope for quad stuff. Like, you know, a lot of this stuff is quad and yeah, like, man, I'm so excited for this. I want this so bad. Mm. Very much with you on that one, Ken. Uh, I, when I saw the, the the demos on yeah this thing here, this video, I was just looking yeah. And there was another one that was done, and I just thought, oh oh no, I'm gonna have to spend even more money. This uh, analog model of synthesizer. I'd love these. If you listen to the bucks in this video, like the you can hear the the low pass gate curves sound good, like the curves and those sorts of things. Like you know, YouTube video. A few weeks ago for it, but there are certain things that you can discern which is like you know hearing the curves of the envelopes and that sort of thing which is extremely important for that bucle sound and i'm hearing it in that video so i'm yeah i'm so all in so all in <laughs> you're muted i was sorry drink uh the person that i would like to hear from about this is mark i would like to hear his because yes, you know obviously course. mark is involved mm -hmm. in bucle and uh, and him being a very knowledgeable guy in, in the analog world, I just really wouldn't mind hearing his uh, his take on this. I'm sure he knows about it. I'm sure he's uh, probably even seen it, put his hands on it. Um, it yeah, it's it's definitely exciting. I the only problem with me, Ken, is I, I I kind of don't know if my brain is 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 that smart enough to understand the Buchler system. That's the only problem with me. I'm kind of um, yeah, I don't know if it's, if, if it's just me, but I don't, I, every time I've looked at it, I've kind of thought, hang on a minute, this is kind of, this doesn't, like, I don't understand, it that's doesn't compute. That's part of why you should get it. One, learning curve that, that will just, you know, make you know your sense even better, but two, that, that inspiration of doing something in a, in a different form factor and in a, in a different workflow. Um, I'll say this, uh, it's, it's going to be easier to get into that than it would be to get into a, a real Buchla system because, you know, in, you know, it's, it's still your rack format. So you're not separating the analog and the CV, um, you know, signals, that sort of thing. And the, and it's still following, you know, uh, volt per octave as opposed to, you know, uh, what is it? Um, zero DB and designed around zero DB and all that stuff. So man, if you have if you have certain modules in your Eurorack that are already standards, like uh, like a maths, there, there's a lot of Eurorack that is very much derived from Buchla systems as it is, and you can certainly get a lot of that Buchla sound in your Eurorack without going this route. But for me, it's it's the it is the aesthetic, it is that that look, it is you know going towards that whole thing. And I was actually talking to some friends recently. My my modular is, for the most part, geared around, I like that that vintage, raw, saturated sound, right? And it's rough. Like, I like my modular, if you really, like, patch it up, like, for the most part, that sucker sounds mean, right? And I've been saying to some friends, I was like, you know, I want to start getting more clean, nice sounds um, in my modular. So I've been looking at different modules that I'm going to get. I'm... Um, I'm going to be picking up the, uh, shoot, the hex inverter. Um, what's the hex inverter one called? He's got a new complex oscillator that's fantastic. I'm going to be picking that up. Some stereo, I, I want to get more stereo filtering in there. But a lot of what I'm doing now, I want to get these like very clean sounds. The Buchla stuff is that. Like that is, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, I just, I want that so bad, man. I'm like, it, it literally can't come quick enough. I'm like, yeah, just take my bank account. Here you go. Is that the mind phaser? Is that the one? Mind phaser, yeah. Mind phaser is like, oh goodness, like, and, and the mind phaser is, you know, 
not a cheap module. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I am not a rich man. <laughs> so like when it yeah, comes yeah. to spending like upwards of four hundred dollars on, on a single oscillator, which it's quite a bit up there, yeah. um, it better be damn good. And that thing is amazing. So yeah, that, that's going to be my next complex oscillator. That, so, and I'm going to get a so with, Gen three with the system generate. with the system two hundred, the Buchla system two hundred. Is that did, does that come as a full a full kit with the um, the, the case and everything. Do, do, does anyone know the so price I, of that? They're showing the Mantis case in that. Um, yeah. And and look at the website. It's saying that they're staggering the release because of part availability. Um, so it looks like they're saying like the oscillator and I think maybe one or two modules, maybe three modules are going to come first. And then it says like spring, summer. And like, so it's like, you know, it's going to be on a cycle. It's going to take a while to get the whole system. But Ah, now that's, that's a good. really that's a really good point. When you bring out modules and you've got a whole series of them, one thing that you sh- that you must do is bring the oscillator out first. Don't bring the oscillator out last. Like there's, there's a certain company making Eurorack modules right now, and they're bringing oscillators out <laughs> last. Like that is just like, <clears throat> why are you doing that? <laughs> Frustration. But yeah. Um, tend to tend to be like um like regardless of the system um in Eurorack, it's like sound sources tend to sell more than sound modifiers so like a oscillator sell more than you know just a filter or an effect so yeah i i would agree with you that on that you know we want to hear it right so the thing is most most people would be able to plug the oscillator in and use it with their other gear so we want to hear it that's the thing. We don't want to hear what can affect it. We want to hear it first. So that makes sense to me. Thai guy had a case for his system. So he has a system. It's like the radiophonic network or whatever. Uh, and I'm sorry, suit, if I'm if I'm botching the name. Um, but he's got a complete system that's absolutely gorgeous and which is really cool. And it's kind of like a synthy um, in, in Eurorack form. But on top of that. He built these custom cases for them. And when I saw it off at the side, like out the side of my eye, I was like, oh my God, it it looks like a Buchla style case because it has like the curve and then the curve out the back. It looks so gorgeous. And I just, man, I would love to put those Buchla modules in Suit's case. Like that just would be. Yeah, yeah. Oh. How's Suit going? I haven't seen him around for much. Is he he still doing all all the stuff or is he kind of. Taking a bit of a break from it. I haven't seen him much I'm lately. Stressed out now because I mean, he just got to put on Nobcon, which is like, you know, any kind of large event is going to be a lot of stress, and and you know, oh yeah, Radiophonic One. Thank you, Synthetic. Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Suit's great. I, I love Suit, and and um, man, that system that he has is is really cool. I highly recommend people check that out. Uh, Radiophonic One is. It's like this weird hybrid between like a like a synthy and and it's got some some other cool stuff in there and it's just very um yeah it's like its own thing man it just lives in its own world very cool mm. yeah I mean I do like I do like that whole sort of um, free from a keyboard octave pitch you know restraints I, I kind of do like that sort of whole whole idea so um, I am open to it. Um, I'm just scared. <laughs> I'm just scared. It's, it was a bit like when I first learned how to play an Odyssey, um, you know, obviously because you're used to like the the mini Moog format, right, with how that synth is set up, and then you go and play an Odyssey, it's like, what? This is weird. Um, and yeah, yeah. after a while you go, hang on a minute, this actually makes a lot of sense and, um, and, you're, and you're completely right at home. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it will be a similar thing. You hop on an MS-20 if you're used to other synths and you're like, what is this diagram? Like, I'm not, I don't remember this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what part of school? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, beautiful. Okay, Chatty's time. Chatty's time. Jeez, it's been busy. I feel like uh, I need to go and have a little lie down, have a little nana nap. Um, <laughs> wow, what a busy show. Um, and obviously there was there's so many more things that we could have shown. Um, there really was. I mean, I'll just give you, while well, you've got the chatties up there and you have a bit of a scroll through. There was uh, Plankton Audio did Zaps. Uh, they did a couple of other modules, Newtone Spice. 
yeah. MX1. We actually, um, excuse me there, we actually did show the Zaps recently, so I didn't need to do that. Dreadbox Nym Nymphs, um, I could have shown, but I thought the ProSynth Network did a good job of that anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. UDO showed their desktop Super 6, which is nice. I didn't really need to show that. Um, the PWM Mal Malevolent, Mal Malevolent, Malevolent. I don't know how you say it. That actually looks quite interesting, that Ma synth. Malevolent. Malevolent. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a shocker. Yes, Bad um, Elephant. The, the Bad Elephant. That's the bad, yeah, that's it. That actually does look interesting, that synth. Um, maybe we can talk about that next week. Erica synths, we, we showed the Percons already. Um, then there's a whole bunch of other things in there. Um, you know, there's uh, the, the, the Jomox, the Mod FM. Talking. Sorry, what's I talked okay? to Daniel and he said he was talking about the Erica. Like, I asked him what he was excited about, and he was like, Yeah, the Erica Synth drum machine is like, he was, he was, he was oozing about that. So, yeah. Yeah. There, if you actually, there's a Sonic State video where uh, Nick did a live stream, I think it was yesterday. And he had Ed walking around, right? And at one stage, he walked past the Erica Synths um, section, and there's this guy jamming out on the new drum machine. The um, I don't know how you how you pronounce it. The the Perkins, right? And um, and and this thing is incredible. I just like, well, hang on a minute, don't walk away. I want to hear this. This was like I was just mucking around on that, and it sounded amazing um, because it's got some, you know, it's kind of. A little bit like the the Moog, um, uh, what do you call it? The um, drummer from another DFAM? mother. Dfam. It's kind of got a bit of that sort of feel in in it. Uh, I'm not saying it's copying that. It's it's like heading down that sort of synthesis territory, um, but it's got some other things of its own, of course, as well. It does look interesting. Yeah. That point, um, but it makes me it makes me think of like issues in my life. <laughs> Because like like I have a rhythm MK2 that just sits in the case. Like I never use it because I, I honestly I don't enjoy using it. But it, it sounds fantastic, but I just don't ever use it. And I'm like, do I sell that thing and get this thing? Like, you know, but I'm also kind of like of the mindset of like I don't ever want to sell it because I know like one day I'm gonna be kicking myself that I had one and I sold it and I didn't like it. And but it it's also one of those things where I pull it out like every two months. And I'm like, no, you're going to like it today. I never <laughs> like it. <laughs> uh, I've, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with, with the Octatrack, but probably not quite as bad. Um, like I, I sometimes get some really, really cool drum beats out of it, and I think to myself, hang on a minute, this isn't just a drum machine. Why are you not make, make, you know, it's a sampler. Why can't I do better than just drum beats? But, yeah, um, it does a really, really nice job of drum drum sounds though it's got a beautiful sound um but yeah no i do like the electron stuff i've got a couple of electron bits of gear um coming up actually in the next couple of weeks we've got some gear to get through like i have literally had quite a lot of stuff coming here um and obviously some of it i've had to wait over a year for like the s2400 um and um well worth the wait i know i whinged a bit during the time but we all you know had a little a bit of steam um when when you know Ken's been talking about this thing, he's had you've had yours, Ken, you know, since the you know, prototype days, right? When he says this thing is built like a tank, he's not kidding. It is built like a tank. I can imagine these things, you know, getting dropped and they're still you'd be able to pick it up and it would still be fine. I mean, like Brad put these feet on this thing, right? <laughs> his feet. Oh, I love them. <laughs> the feet on it. Look at that. Like they're monsters. Look. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, is like my prototype didn't have those feet at all for like the long time because we're still looking at like different feet and all that. And <laughs> when I finally got them, I was like, whoa. <laughs> like it's such a little thing. Where you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I, I saw Ricky's video and, and he was uh, talking about how like it's so heavy he wouldn't bring it to a gig. And I'm like, it's, not it's, it's really funny to me to, to – you know, to listen to like modern guys that are like, you know, used to bringing out things like a 1010 black box and like a novation rhythm tracks and like the, these very thin, tiny devices that can be powered by USB. Like, yeah. and it's like, well, yeah, you're used to doing that. That's a whole world different than like, yeah, like I still would bring out a Technic 1200 and a DJ mixer and like, like I'm like, if I'm showing out, I'm showing out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to 
it's like, but honestly, like, yeah, like that thing is a studio piece to me. I'm, like, I'm, I'm using that studio. I'm not really bringing that out like that unless it's a really big ass show and I want to have some fun. But no, yeah. I, I enjoy that. But, yeah. Plus the good. updates. Yeah. The oh, updates. So we've we've got to get got to get a show together where we're doing that. Um, I'm I'm super 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 like in love with this thing as I keep showing the poly end tracker. This has been getting a bit of love at Superbooth too. Uh, I love what the the poly end guys are doing at the moment with their with their marketing. They're saying let's let's make um, let's make songs, let's make tracks, let's make albums, and they're actually going to feature people that make albums, not necessarily on this, but all the poly end gear. Um, so I don't know, Ken. Have you ever tried this? Have you had a crack at this thing yet? You know, I haven't, and I'm I'm deeply conflicted mentally about that thing um, yep. because I'm like, like I know trackers are super powerful. I haven't used a tracker in I don't know how long. Like maybe what was the Nintendo one, LSDJ or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I like I want one, but at the same time I'm like, will I use it? Is the question. You know. Yeah. When, when you start getting. Your setup and, and everybody in here setup. It's like you have a lot of gear. It's like you have to start asking. Like, yes, we obviously want everything, but how much are you actually going to use something? And that's that because is that thing battery powered or no? No, no. It's it's Can USB C it, powered. USB C. Oh, it, okay. So well, so yeah, you can just easily do a USB battery bank then. Exactly. Yep. See, yeah, I love that. It gets back to like the Explorer. Like, I love battery powered gear. Even if I don't use things in a battery powered way crazy often, mm -hmm. I enjoy the, the the knowledge, the mental aspect of it where I'm like, yeah, I can just go sit on my couch and do this. Like that's yeah. really fun to me. Do you, how do you like the workflow on that thing? I, I love it because I mean, I came from that whole Amiga Commodore 64 tracker days. So I've, I've been through that. I've actually made, you know, tracks in my younger years with trackers. So sorry, I'm, Got the camera on you because I'm just grabbing the power bank thing um, while we're talking. So yeah, I, I like it. And um, look, it's not it's not even as bad. In those old days, we used to have to use hexadecimal, you know, notation and things like that. It was crazy, right? So it's not even as bad as that. Um, it's I think a lot more. You, I'm just going to use this just to. So I've never actually tried it. So this is just my, you you know, USB power bank. USB See, I'll do that. Like I'm all about power and stuff from USB battery banks. That's awesome. Beautiful. Now that screen is not a touch screen, right? No, that's not a touch screen. Okay. How does it feel as far as durability? Like, do you worry about like damaging that screen at all? No, it's the the keys on it. You know how? I, oh, get it back again. The keys on on the on this side here. They're like keyboard, mm -hmm. they're like computer keyboard keys. So oh, really? they've actually got a, like a okay. tactile sort of touch to them. Um, and this whole thing's metal and it's oh, really is it? very slim line. And okay. uh, the, the gel pads are, you know, gel pads, there's nothing special about them. They're not after touch or velocity or anything crazy. They're just basic light note on note off sort of stuff. But all the keys, they're all kind of like a like if you were using an Amiga keyboard, it's kind of similar. What's you know? the what's the MIDI output like on that? Like you, you can sequence your whole studio. With it. Uh yeah, there's there's actually MIDI tracks on this thing. Uh, yeah. So, um, Extremely yeah. important. Like you know, when I got the Tempest, I was super disappointed at the external MIDI uh, sequencing because because I actually love the the sequencer on it. Um, but you can't really sequence the rest of your studio with it. So like something like that, I'd be like, I'd have to hook it up to at least like, you know, three other pieces of gear to have some serious fun. Yeah. And, and look, I don't think it's really meant to be, it's not really meant to be like an MPC, like a brain sort of, sort of thing. It's, that's not really what it's for, but it has MIDI, MIDI tracking in it. It has audio tracking, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty handy. The, the latest firmware update that did it, allowed you to bring an audio input into it and you can pass it straight through to the inbuilt effects on there too, which is really, really cool. So you can like you can use this in so many different ways. You can use it as a looper, as a, a tracker, as an audio effects unit, um, as a MIDI controller. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite it's quite intuitive. But um, anyway, and the other thing that we need to talk about 
very, very soon. I keep showing this is this. And I know, Ken, you've got one now, right? I, I got it, but I haven't had a chance to honestly even touch it. Um, yeah, you've been busy, though. I got it like the day before I left for NobCon. So this is, just so you, if, whoever hasn't got one of these yet, this is all plastic. So this thing is all, it's very, very light. And the whole feel to this is is very uh, plasticky. Uh, there is some like gel sort of uh, silicon pads here, but it, um, yeah, it's not like it disappointing or anything. Do you have the other one? The if it works. I never got that. No, never got that one. I have that one too, and, and I I actually really like it. Um, they're super fun. This is the overlay that it comes with too. By the way, the the XFM has an overlay, yeah, um, which I haven't. I haven't, again, I haven't dug into this thing really. I turned it on. I have batteries in it right now, um, but I need to learn it um, before I say even a word about it. Like, I don't really like doing videos or content on stuff that I don't know because then you put misinformation out there and then people are, like, thinking bad things about, about a product or whatever, and you're like, whoa, my yeah. bad. Like, I did I was doing. But the, um, the 8-Bit Warps is really – interesting in that like it doesn't follow what other people are doing so like it has this whole this thing where it's it's a looper built in so it's one track sequencer but then audio looper mm. you know you've got multiple tracks audio looping on it this one is uh the xfm is i think four tracks of sequencing um so this one does it differently than that one but yeah it's different yeah, i can't wait yeah i want to hook them both up battery powered of course again and um, I don't know if it does external sequencing either. Um, if it does, again, battery power stuff, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna have like an out outdoor fun time. I think next week in my area, it's gonna be like 70 degrees and sunny all week with like a slight <laughs> overcast. I'm gonna be outside just jamming. Yeah, battery outside. Annoying. Yeah. Hey, um, before we go off the topic of the XFM, I think one of the things that really attracted me to it is the um, the ability to actually manipulate the you know the whole FM you know sound itself. It was actually like it's really quick to make your own FM sound, and um, whereas a lot of like if you go back to a DX7, it's like you know learn how to program, wear the white coat, you know, be the nerd. So that's that kind of cool thing about it. It's very immediate. It's very easily um, programmable, and uh, and it's got the groove box side to it. So, you know, you're actually you're you're making sounds, and then you're sequencing them real real quick on the fly, sort of stuff. So, I'm obviously I'm the same as you, Ken. I don't want to really sort of show stuff until I've had a couple of weeks with it. A bit like the S2400. I've been talking about this weekly for the last month, and the reason why I haven't shown it yet is because. <laughs> I need to spend time it, it, with it. it. And then you're like, oh, well, now I got to I got to start over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, the firmware, yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks to Wagu for the 5 pounder that's um, that's that's going to go on the fridge. Um, looks like I was um, typing in chat before. <laughs> I don't know what happened now. I must have hit the keyboard or something. Um, but yeah, um, I think we should wrap up the show because uh, we've been going for two and a half hours according to the clock here. Um, and um, I believe there's a 2600. Are you going to say runs? Oh, sorry, I was going to say runs. Are you going to say that those those random numbers were just an accident? Because I thought it was a hexadecimal joke that I just didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. I think my mouse might have hit the keyboard or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah could, exactly. Yeah. It was in the middle of that bit. Yeah. You could quote me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't so hear. yeah, that the um, what I was going to say, the ARP, the ARP uh, Foundation doing the uh, twenty six hundred thing right now. Mm. I think um, that started about thirteen minutes ago. So um, obviously would have been a few. I think uh, Manny went off to to, to do that. Yeah. I think it, there was a ten dollar fee to do it. It's going to be for a long time. So it's going to be all day uh, if you're. What in is that. it? So it's it's the Alan Perlman Foundation. Um, and uh, and it's it's about the twenty six hundred. They've got they've got all these guest speakers there. I think one of them is Jean Michel Jarre, of course, um, being a big wow. twenty six hundred guy. Um, so it'll be yeah. It, if you actually are bored today and you haven't got anything to do and you've got a tenner sitting in your credit card, go and do that after the show. Um, it's it kind of started already, but I'm sure you know 
a whole day where you're not missing out on much. I think it'll all just be introductions at the moment. Um, I can't remember who else was there. I think um, uh, Lisa Della, Della um, what's her name? Lisa Della, oh, I keep forgetting her last name. Lisa Della. Yeah. Lisa Belladonna. Lisa Belladonna, yeah. Uh, she's there. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of people there. So um, that's where the, everyone would be this afternoon in your part of the world. This, this afternoon's been in my part of the world, so <laughs> we're all finished. Um, really big uh, thanks, uh, a Andy and uh, Darren um, and Ken, for coming on. Um, love having you guys on. It's been awesome. Ken, I know you must be, you must be tired. This, this is the weekend now you've had off, right? And you're still working. You're still talking about hydrosynth. You're still, you know, you're a hard worker. I don't, I don't doing that. I don't yeah. get tired of doing that. Yeah. I, I get tired of like, you know, I, I woke up way, way, way late after staying up way too late last night playing video games with a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, go go spend some time with that lovely wife and, and kids of yours. Um, have, a, have an awesome weekend for the rest of it. Uh, and same to everyone in chat. Many, many thanks for the support. Um, and um, I think we'll, we'll end the show, guys. Uh, so wave goodbyes. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. See you, See you later. Bye.